Welcome back to another stream. Hi everyone, how are you? Man, am I glad to be here. It's Thursday night in Kuala Lumpur. And man, I think we've been doing this every week, right? Live streams on Thursday night for like continuously five or six weeks now. <laughs> how is everyone doing? The topic for tonight, uh, tonight's stream is what is your favorite micro four thirds camera? Well, it is personal and sometimes the reasons don't have to be logical. We all have our individual reasons on which camera that we choose, but I believe a majority of you here are using micro four thirds camera. Even if you have other systems, maybe you also use your micro four thirds camera alongside maybe a full frame or medium format or Fuji or any other camera brands that you're shooting with. So anyways, uh, before we dive deeper into the topic, I want to say hi to some people as you usual there's a lot of you here already all right and trick says hello from washington dc hey and trick how are you very very happy to see you here again uh haywire says gm1 or gm5 well gm5 is technically more superior than the gm1 in every aspect but it's also very hard to find these days so i guess whichever they can find is awesome i have my uh gm1 here yeah, here is my awesome GM1. <laughs> All right, so nice to see so many of you here. Ayman says, Abam Robin. Hey, Ayman, so nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Heywar says, hello from Croatia in Europe. Hey, wow, someone from Croatia, nice. Being Wolfie says, hello from Mitter Beach. All right, hello to you too. Uh, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I love my EM1 Mark II. Thanks to Robin from PJ. Hey, someone local here. And I have my EM1 Mark II here. And it is my favorite camera. I'll talk more about it a little bit later. Yeah, EM1 Mark II. Still serving me really, really well. James No Dick says, I love my Olympus EM5 Mark III, but I still love an OM1. I think EM5 Mark III is an excellent camera, and OM1, for all the complaints that I've been throwing towards that camera, I do think that it is quite a good camera. I can see how it can be a lot of people's favorite Micro Four Thirds camera. And Trick says, Panasonic Lumix G85 and G9. G85 has built-in panoramic mode. Yeah, I think all cameras should have built-in panoramic mode, right? In case you want to stitch like multiple photographs for a wider field view, right? To fit more within the frame. And we don't want to carry like wide-angle lens or sometimes we don't even have ultra-wide-angle lens. So that's a good solution to fit as much as possible within a frame. Jari Huikari says, hi from snowy Finland. Ha! Huh? It is already snowing in Finland, hey! <laughs> it must be really cold there. What's the temperature like? Hmm, let me know. And nice to see you again, Jari. Nice to see you. Scott says, hello from Atlanta. Hey, Scott. Thanks for dropping by. So good to see you. Noon WOT says, not that I have much to compare, but I absolutely love my EM1. X, the grip, the features, the quality, etc. Glad that I didn't get the Canon R7, although it would have been great too. I think at this moment, there is no right and wrong or, you know, uh, which camera is the best. That doesn't really exist. It's more like choosing the right tool for yourself to get the job done. And we all have different preferences. We all shoot different things. So getting the right camera for yourself, that's the most important thing. And I'm, I'm glad that you like the EM1 X. I think it's an excellent camera. And that's the camera that I use for the thumbnail of this video. I explore Thailand says for video GH5 for photo EM10 Mark III. Interesting. Um, may I ask why not G GH5 for photo as well? I'm just curious. Hui Williams says had two G6 cameras and still have one. Replace the other with a G7, which despite its lack of body stabilization and its noisy mechanical shutter, is my favorite. GX80 is better in those respects. Wow, G6. I've actually never used G6 or G7 before. So if I can find my hands, if I can get my hands on one used unit somehow, I would love to make a video about it. Hey, I would love to explore it. Hui Williams continues to say, GX80 lacks buttons and dials compared to G7, though the G7 is nicer to hold and very, very lightweight. Yeah, I think these days, well, it depends on 
the way you use the cameras. A lot of uh, photographers will appreciate direct shortcuts or direct controls to some of the quick settings, like dials or delicate buttons, right? I totally understand where you're coming from. Toga Too Good says the only Micro Four Thirds are the Olympus DSLR E series uh, with the nicest shutter sound for satisfying shutter therapies. But the Olympus DSLRs, they are not Micro Four Thirds. They are Four Thirds format. So when they went micro, they took away the DSLR pentaprism, the mirror, the. It basically, it's just. It doesn't have mirror anymore. It doesn't have optical viewfinder anymore, right? So the first mirrorless uh, micro four thirds was the EP1. And then subsequently we have EP2, EP3, and then the OMD cameras came along, EM5, EM1. Uh, that's what we call micro four thirds camera. But here in this discussion, we are talking about micro four thirds cameras specifically just to narrow down the scope or else people will say, oh, I love film cameras. And some will say, I prefer my large format camera. And some will say, I prefer my Leica cameras, right? So let's just narrow down the discussion to micro four thirds camera. HR Maro, hey, nice to see you. Uh, HR Maro says, love my OM1, I know, I know. But if anything, I love my old EMR Mark II even more. Probably because the autofocus is a bit better and it's lighter and tiny bit smaller and cheaper, but doesn't do animal autofocus. Yeah, if only like this EMR Mark II has like a firmware upgrade or some kind of improvement to have the similar uh, animal AI detection like what we see in the OM1, right? I know it's probably not going to be possible because it requires more processing power but still I think the EMR Mark II is quite a capable camera all right Huey Williams says ah uh, I lost the comment here all right Huey Williams says on the other hand I love my Olympus EM10 Mark II and EM1 Mark II they're all different and great in their own ways I agree I also love EM10 series cameras I have an EM10 Mark I here though I think the EM10 Mark II is also an excellent excellent camera and Trio says, uh, talking to Noon WOT, I sold my G85 and bought the R7. I'll sell it for the G9 Mark II. I think G9 Mark II is going to be awesome. You won't regret it. Original Gems Track says, Hi Robin, always cool to see one of your live streams pop up over lunch break here in London. My favorite Micro Four Thirds camera is probably my EM1 Mark III, but would love to try the OM1 as well. I think EM1 Mark III is an excellent workhorse. Uh, it was the flagship for Olympus, and in many ways, it is still a very capable camera today. Of course, the OM1 comes with some improvements, there, especially the computational autofocus, the subject detection. Uh, if you're shooting a lot of wildlife and bird photography, then the OM1 is definitely a huge step up. Being Wolfie says, my favorite is the original EM5 and the original EM1. 16 megapixels is more than enough for me. I love the colors that come out from them. I have to agree with you, hey, even for myself, 16 megapixels is plenty. Uh, I really need even more than that. And I still do love the EM5 and EM1. I think one of these days I'm going to bring out my EM5 and EM1 for some shutter therapy sessions. Very good choices. Christopher Rodriguez says, hello from New York City. Hey, Christopher, uh, nice to see you here. Being Wolfie says, and I love the crunchiness of the files when you shoot at mid ISOs, 1002 to 3002. I feel that it gives me the look that it's very close to film. I know not everyone is in that, but I am. Yeah, I think noise problem is possibly uh, overrated, right? I think it's, it's just, it's not necessary. And, and people are obsessed about, you know, clean high ISO. But to me, it's definitely not a thing that I would want to obsess about. It's not about technical perfection. And what it, what, it doesn't matter if there's some noise in the photograph. And if it's a good photograph, it's a good photograph anyways. Klaus says, Hello Robin, I'm in love with my EM1X. I think EM1X is an excellent camera if you have larger hands, right? My hands are, are not that big, so um, I prefer smaller cameras like the EM1 series cameras. Lisa Bellos says, I have an OM5 for photography and vlogging. I bought it to replace my GX80. The criteria was the autofocus, the size and weight, the tropicalization. What is a tropicalization? What does that mean? The stabilization and the video log profile. Ah, okay, I, I get it. For vlogging, definitely the autofocus on the OM5, it has face detection autofocus, so it'll definitely be better than the GX80. Uh, it's also smaller, lighter, and the video, yeah, it does have log profile stabilization. At that time, I think it was uh, class leading, right? Um, are you talking about weather ceiling? Tropicalization? I'm assuming it's weather ceiling. 
Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I keep waiting for a true successor to the EM5 Mark II. The plastic EM5 is in a different class of product. I have no issue with the plastic. Like, I worked in a construction site before I was a civil engineer. And we have to use safety helmets. It's a requirement to go into construction sites because it's dangerous. Things can fall onto your head or you can fall down and knock your head on something. So having a safety helmet is important. And safety helmets, they are all made of plastic are you gonna question hey just because the safety helmet is made of plastic i'm not confident i demand a safety helmet that's made of metal it doesn't make sense right so i'm perfectly fine with cameras that's made of plastic as long as it's well built Miss Kogaweki, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, says, Hello Robin, hey, thanks to be here. Hello to everyone, greetings from Poland, Europe. My favorite Micro Four Thirds is the Olympus EM1 Mark II at the moment, and it will be the OM1 soon. Awesome, I still love my EM1 Mark II. I still use it as my main workhorse today. Steve H says, hello from Florida. Hey Steve, how are you? Nice to see you here. Nicole says, hello from Strasbourg, France. Hi Nicole, nice to see you again. Thanks for dropping by. Jerry says, minus two degrees Celsius, so it's warm. <laughs> yeah, I think relatively that's warm for you guys in Finland. Hey, I think like my friend Mati Salanta told me sometimes it gets down to like minus 20, minus 30 in the deep winter. So that's like going to be so crazy. Dwayne says, hello from Australia. I love my GS8, great image quality. Hey, Dwayne, thanks for dropping by. And yes, GS8 is amazing, amazing camera from Panasonic. Ross Lion Pictures says, hello from London. Hey, nice to see you here. I love my Pan F that I recently got more than the EM1 Mark II. Actually, now that I don't love my EM1 Mark II as much anymore, I'm thinking of swapping it to the Mark III. Is there anything particular in the EM1 Mark II that you don't like? Maybe you can let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. Paul S says, Hi from the wet and winds UK. I love my EM5 Mark II, but considering an upgrade to the OM5. Well, go for it. Better image uh, sensor, which will give you better dynamic range, uh, resolution, high ISO performance, better stabilization, more uh, better autofocus, definitely. And in terms of video, it's a huge upgrade. Uh, you can shoot 4K now. You have a lock profile. There's just a lot more controls, a lot more things you can do with the camera. You have a uh, high resolution shot. You have pro capture mode. All these things were missing from the original EM5. Uh, EM5 Mark II. Angelo says, hello from the Netherlands. Hey, Angelo, nice to see you here. How are you? Jens M says, greetings from Norway. Hey, Jens, nice to see you again. Hafizan says, hi, Enchet Robin. Hey, Apakaba. Thanks for dropping by. UMS says, I enjoy my Lumix G9. Hi. I, I think G9 is a great camera. A lot of people love that camera, right? And because it's so successful, now we have the G9 Mark II, which I think will be an excellent camera as well. I as well, Thailand says, hi from Chiang Rai. Hey, that's not too far away. I will use GH5 for photos if I'm making a video, but if I go out mainly for photography, I prefer the smaller EM10 Mark III and maybe take an action cam if I want to make B-roll. I, I get you. Like a smaller size cameras for street photography or any any casual snapshots it's definitely a better option you don't have to deal with the heavier weight it's so much easier to handle a smaller and if you want to pack in a smaller bag it also doesn't take much space so yeah now i understand why i prefer the em10 over the gh5 for ph photography uh, sorry i can't pronounce your name I love my Lumix G7 and GF8. They are quite old devices but they are light and use them well with, without minor problems with minor problems. Okay. Uh, yeah, G7, GF8. No, I don't think they're that old. I think any cameras in the past seven, eight years, or even 10 years, they are still relatively new and definitely more than good enough to do whatever we want to do uh, today. And I think GF8, G7, these are excellent, excellent Micro Four Thirds cameras. IS Road Thailand says, mainly travel by motorbike, uh, so smaller gear would be better. Yeah, now I get you, right? When you travel a lot, uh, when you commute a lot, yeah, smaller cameras and lighter gear definitely is pre preferable. Jen Garcia, hi, nice to see you. How are you? Jen says, hi, Robin, although I now have an EM5 Mark III, I like more the tilting screen of the EM10 series. I really hate the fully articulating screen. Well, it depends on what you do, right? Like I have 
obviously been doing a lot of video for my YouTube channel. So I actually appreciate the uh, the swivel screen, the articulated screen, right? The swivel screen helps me because so that I can like, you know, do something like this, uh, hold a camera in front of me and I can just vlog, right? Uh, it makes more sense. Whereas like, uh, if I'm not doing any video related stuff, then of course I'll prefer to use the, the tilt screen, uh, which is a lot more convenient and a lot quicker and more efficient for street photography i just have to tilt and i have a low angle i just go the other way that i have i can do high angle photography i i get what you mean uh, if you just purely do photography then it makes sense that uh yeah the tilt screen is is a better option nicole says i hope to one day replace my em5 mark 1 and em10 mark 1 with an em1 mark 3 and om5 i love the options that olympus and om digital solutions have to offer yeah i think the em1 mark 3 especially is going to be a huge upgrade a huge jump from the em5 mark 1 better sensor better build quality better handling uh better processor better autofocus better electronic viewfinder better screen uh faster it has dual cut slots longer better battery live, uh, it has USB charging, power delivery, it has 4K video, it's like the list is endless, it's like a far superior camera if you compare it with the original EM5. Um, Milanov says Olympus EP1, wow, that is truly a classic. <laughs> I recently had uh, the EP1, a reacquired re one, just to play around with it, but I have sold it off already. No reason to keep too many things. I don't like to hog gear. Uh, I understand some of my older cameras, like my EM5 and EM1, the conditions are so bad. It's already uh, worn, there's too much wear and tear. Of course, I, I'm a professional photographer when I use my gear, I really use them. So because they were in such bad conditions, then I just decided to keep them. Uh, even if I sell them, it wouldn't fetch much value anyway. So, uh, but if I try, because I also run a YouTube channel, so sometimes I acquire certain gear just to try out, uh, to make content, or to satisfy my curiosity. I'm a photographer after all, and I love all cameras, right? I'm always curious about what these other cameras can do. So if I acquire other cameras and I don't find any use for it, I will usually just uh, sell it in a used market or I will give it to a friend. <laughs> Bram Renders says, hello from the Netherlands. Hey Bram, how are you? And I love my OM-1 for wildlife and my OM-5 for random photography. So the OM-1 is uh, specifically for wildlife and anything else other than wildlife is OM-5. <laughs> I think that's a very, very interesting separation or uh, the way you assign your cameras for, for your photography. Very, very nice. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I upgraded from EPL 8 to EM5 Mark III and I'm very happy. Yes, that's a huge jump. Uh, EM5 Mark III is a middle tier. It's technically a mini EM1 Mark II. Like, it does a lot of things that the EM1 Mark II can do. Same sensor, uh, almost same image stabilization, uh, same image quality, uh, very similar autofocus. It's just that it's smaller in build. Uh, it doesn't have magnesium alloy body. It doesn't have dual cut slots. The burst rate is a little bit slower the battery life is shorter but overall is the capability of the camera is still very very similar to em1 mark ii and i am using the em1 mark ii as my flagship camera today so uh, workhorse for my professional shoots today scott says to audience how many micro four thirds did you buy as a result of robin's advice oh dear my account is now two em1 mark ii and epl7 thanks robin both are favorites oh I'm, I'm glad that you like these two cameras. I think they're my favorites as well. Uh, EMR Mark II is still my workhorse. Like I said earlier, I use it to shoot uh, most of my jobs uh, recently. And uh, EPL7, I would have put it as my favorite. I, I did say it, uh, I did make a few videos recently about EPL7. Uh, one of them being why it is a better option if you compare it to the Ricoh series camera, like the Ricoh GR3, GR3X. Uh, Let's not dive too deep into that. But the reason why I didn't pick it is because uh, the EM10 uh, is basically very similar to EPL7, but the EM10 has the built-in uh, viewfinder. So with the viewfinder, uh, for me, I need the viewfinder because in Malaysia, we do get a uh, very harsh sun and I do a lot of outdoor shooting. So the viewfinder does help me with that. Other than that, if I don't need a viewfinder, then EPL7 would definitely be my favorite. Now, Zontag says, should I buy EM5 Mark III or EM1 Mark II? They are both very similar cameras. They will give you very similar results, but the EM1 Mark II will have uh, better handling, this larger gripping area. 
and because of this larger gripping area and of course it has uh dual cut slots i'm not sure if you can not see this so it has dual cut slots i'm gonna bring it to the middle ah uh, focus is very bad anyway it has dual cut slots it has a much larger battery much 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 larger battery my autofocus is fixed on my face anyways uh I will say that if you shoot professionally, if you have clients and if you're doing a job, the EMR Mark II is a better solution, uh, handles better, it has better electronic viewfinder, it lasts longer, the battery life lasts longer, it has USB, uh, no, it doesn't have USB charging, but it does have dual cut slots, which gives you redundancy in case you need a backup. Uh, overall, it's, ju it's just a better suited camera for a profession professional shoot environment. Whereas if you want to use the EM5 Mark III, I'll suggest that you use it as an everyday camera. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's easier to carry around. It is a better travel camera. Uh, it's also a better vlogging camera. So I've been vlogging a lot with the EM5 Mark III. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think the EMR Mark II uh, is a superior camera for professional environment. Jens M says, in general, I think my everyday carry favorite is the EM10 Mark IV, combined with the Lumix 12 to 32 and 35 to 100 kit lenses, a jacket pocketable system that weighs in at under 600 grams. Very, very interesting combination. I think EM10 series cameras are wonderful. I've mentioned that, that my EM10 Mark I is my favorite. Uh, actually, it's my favorite because I have it, right? If I have EM10 Mark III or EM10 Mark IV, those will be my favorites as well. It doesn't make any difference. I just love the EM10 series cameras so much uh, if I don't need to use it for a professional shoot environment. And like you said, it weighs so little. And for me, I probably wouldn't be bringing the zoom lenses. I'll be uh, fitting with prime lenses, maybe the 15 f1.7, a 25 f1.8, and a 45 f1.8. Two to three lenses uh, for my street photography. Oops, uh, jumped too far ahead. We're gonna come back to the original comment. Where were we? Jens Ems continue to say, that said, I have other combos I use if actually doing photography other than opportunity shooting. Yeah, there are other lenses for different purposes, right? Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Hello from Russia. Hey, thanks for dropping by. And wow, Russia is very far away. Steve uh, Snetzler says, hello from Köln, Germany. Cole here, uh, G9 soon to be G9 Mark II with a 14 to 140 lens. Wow, G9 is such a favorite camera, right? For a lot of people, I can see why after you've used G9, you will go for G9 Mark II. There was so much improvements in that camera. And yeah, if I can get my hands on one, I would love to do my review on the camera as well. John63 says, Greetings from Finland to Robin and all. Wow, we do have quite a few people from Finland. Hey, Jari, Jones. Hi. And it's getting really cold there. Gerard Photo Art says, Hello from Maryland. Hi, Gerard. Thanks for dropping by. How are you? Bro Meyer says, Hello, Robin. I own an EM10 Mark IV, but I'm looking forward to get an EM5 or even the OM5 because of the autofocus. My little daughter is just too fast for the autofocus of the EM10. Yeah, I, I get it. But then again, like, um, I don't think the EM5 Mark III, the OM5's continuous autofocus is that great. It is definitely better than the EM10 Mark IV because of the face detachment autofocus. But uh, yeah, don't expect miracles. And Gerard Photo Art says, I love my Leica Deluxe 7. And that's the equivalent of LX100, right? If I'm not wrong. Uh, the LX100 also has a micro photos sensor. Terry Day says, Hi, Robin from the UK. Hey, Terry, nice to see you. Thanks for dropping by. So good to see you again. I love my OM1 and Panef for a smaller setup. Yeah, it seems like it's a consistent pattern here for a lot of people. OM1 is like the main camera. And uh, there will always be, or, or you know, maybe EM1 or some some G9, right? Then and, and then there will be a smaller camera like a GF8 or uh, a EPL series cameras or EM10 series camera as uh, a smaller setup for other ki kinds of random photography. Rosalind Pitcher says to follow up the EM3 apparently has faster autofocus for a fast moving baby. I miss more shots nowadays. Wow, your baby moves that fast? And the live ending sounds very interesting. For everything else, I use the Pan F. Yeah, Pan F is good enough for a majority of shots anyway. Yeah, but for faster or action shots, right? Fast paced shots, I think the EM1 Mark III is definitely a better camera. It's more responsive. 
Hui Williams says, one camera I really love is the Leica Deluxe 7, which is a customized version of the LX100 Mark II. Mine is the 007 Limited Edition and the 17 megapixel effective sensor, but the sensor itself is 21 megapixels. Yeah, they do crop it down. I think it's like, it has like a multi aspect ratio, right? You can shoot square, uh, 16.9 or different aspect ratio, and it still try to maximize uh, the, the area of the sensor that is being used. Number six says, my favorite camera is the GX7 because the ergonomic and the features are unreal. But I usually use my Olympus EM1 original and the EPL7 instead. Yeah, the, I, I still feel that the original EM1 is a great camera. I, I should be bringing it out and do some something with the camera. And I've always said the EPL7 is a great camera. I even said that it's, it's a better alternative than some other cameras out there like the Ricoh GR series cameras, which are ridiculously expensive. And uh, GX7, I have not used it as extensively i have uh, i've seen it in person i've tried it briefly but i've never brought it out and done a shuttle therapy session with it so i'm very curious about the camera as well if i can find one i think it'll be an awesome camera for me to do something on this channel zoltan says hi robin hey zoltan nice to see you how are you uh, i love my omd em5 original oh, that's a great camera with the 1250 and the 40 to 150 kit lenses and the pictures it produces beautiful i never will part with my em5 yes the EM5 is such a wonderful camera. And it's also very beautiful. Hey, it's not just the photos that's beautiful, but the camera itself is beautiful. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I would like an OM. I like to. I would like OM to create an 8 megapixels micro four thirds sensor for low light conditions like A7S. We don't need 25 megapixels like G9 Mark II. But here's the thing rolling back the shutter. Sorry, not shutter. Rolling back the megapixel count, like making it less. Having less megapixels on image sensor does not necessarily guarantee better high ISO performance. Uh, doesn't mean that you we will get less noise. There is a lot more going on in the sensor design, and obviously technology has improved so much. It's more on how we optimize the light that is captured by the sensor itself rather than doing all these things like having less megapixels or i don't know using all kinds of like tricks to 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 optimize the the, the output right I, I think there's a lot more happening there and uh and we have the technology these days to make things better eight megapixels with 4k video well at least 60 frames per second or 120 frames we already have 60 frames per second 120 frames per second so yeah good j GDJB says, I still have an Olympus EPL-1. Wow, that is a classic. That was, um, fun fact, EPL-1 was my first Micro Four Thirds camera. I bought the camera just so that I can join a group of Micro Four Thirds uh, club. Uh, there's a Micro Four Thirds club here in, in Kuala Lumpur and uh, at that time, I was using eSystem DSLR. I don't have a Micro Four Thirds camera. And under peer pressure, I bought the EPL one. I uh, spent quite a lot of money. Uh, bear in mind that I was a young engineer, junior engineer, and my salary was shit. And I did not have a lot of spare cash to burn. So to spend that kind of money just to get a camera, just so that I can join the club. And, well, long story short, that club burned me. <laughs> and because of that incident, uh, the, I had some clashes with, with the, the, the admin people or the group leaders. Uh, because of that incident, I vowed to never join any photography clubs ever again in my life. No more clubs, no more societies, no more forums. You will not see me in any Facebook groups. You will not see me in any forums. I'm not in DP Review. I'm not in any discussions on Four Thirds rumor site. I'm nowhere to be found. I don't want to join anyone because I give and give and give so much. I share so much. I put my heart and soul into the club and people just don't appreciate it and just come back and just stab me at the back. So no. <laughs> so yeah, when we talk about EPL1, it brings me back some bitter memories. But this is a great camera. Uh, nothing, nothing against the camera. The camera is awesome. Anthony says, I would like to see an all new OM2 with 24 megapixel uh, BSI stack sensor and all the new image processors, slightly larger dials and joystick to make camera more easier to operate when wearing gloves. <laughs> uh, Anthony, we are discussing what favorite Micro Four Thirds camera in this stream. So what is your favorite Micro Four Thirds camera? 
Mark Wagner says, I now have an EMR Mark III, but as in the old saying goes, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. It's been my personal experience, the battery compartment door on all Olympus cameras are very flimsy. Really? I have... I've been using exclusively Olympus cameras for my professional shoots since day one. And I've owned uh, from, say, the DSLRs, right? E520, E1, E5. Uh, recently, moving on to Micro Four Thirds, I have the EM5, EM1, EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III. I had the OM, uh, sorry, the OM1 now, more recently. I also have used, uh, I still own the EM10 series cameras, the EM10. Uh, I have no issues with the battery compartment door and the battery compartment door, they still stay perfectly fine. <laughs> so I really don't know what you were talking How did you destroy your battery compartment door? Uh, and I have a lot of friends using Olympus cameras as well and I've never heard of uh, battery compartment door issues. Yumi says, my current is EM5 Mark II. I'm waiting until the OM5 series will get a power grip again. Ah, all right. I think from EM5 Mark II to the OM5, it will be a huge jump. Uh, better sensor, a uh, better uh, processor, right? Better image stabilization, uh, overall better autofocus, better video. Everything is improved. Jones63 says, I have 10 and 5 Mark I. 10 and 5, so I'm assuming it's EM10 and EM5 Mark 1 for backup and use ma mainly EM10 Mark 2, EM5 Mark 2. Love all my Olympus cameras. Now, I'm, I'm having problems with people shortening names. Now, I just have to be very honest. Like, once upon a time, a friend asked me to help her find uh, lenses. Uh, she wants to borrow lenses to be used on her camera, all right? So she told me um, I'm using a Canon uh, M1, right? So I, I assume it was the Canon EOS M cameras, the mirrorless cameras, right? So which is uh, the first EOS M, which is the M Mark One. So I blasted out on my social media, asking my friends if they have uh, certain lenses that my, my friend can borrow for her photography project, right? And then, uh, so I found some lenses and I brought it to her and she said, oh, oh, uh, sorry, uh, I can't fit these lenses. These lenses are too small. Then I asked her, what camera are you exactly using? And she showed me her camera and it was actually the Canon 5D Mark I. I don't know how she can change from a Canon 5D to a Canon M1. You see the problem here, and sometimes it's like it's, it's very difficult. Like some people will tell me, "Oh, I've been using the OM uh, One Mark Three uh, for for the past two years, and I love it." And I'm like, "Wow, I thought there's only one OM One at the moment, you know." And then where I keep pushing, I say, "Oh, okay, you mean it was the EM One Mark Three, or some people say that uh, I don't know the EPL Ten, and then they'll just say, uh, I have the Ten, but then." What are you referring to? Is it the EPL 10 or is it the EM 10? It's, it's like, it's very confusing, right? And they say the 5, is it the EPL 5 or EM 5? Or I have the Mark 2. So is it the EM 10 Mark 2, EM 5 Mark 2, EM 1 Mark 2? You know, it's like, please stop shortening names. And I don't think the names are too long. It's just type EM 1, 2 or EM 5, too right so it's like man I, I just wish that things are not so confusing i understand the problem comes from olympus and their naming system it could have been better i i get it totally but but then again like for discussion sake like please don't shorten things too much like i have the 10 and 5 is it the em10 em5 was it epl10 epl5 or even a canon r10 a canon r5 <laughs> all right zoltan Varga says olympus forever for me awesome Ivar says, I like Panasonic Lumix GX80, I own it. Uh, EM1 Mark III, Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II, dream about it. Panasonic Lumix GX9, dream about it. And Panf and F2, dream about it. <laughs> you have a lot of dreams there, Ivar. Time to wake up. Jerry Vicari says, so far I've only bought budget-friendly cameras. My four years old EPL8 is my favorite. I don't need a better camera yet. If I take a photo which is not satisfying, it's my fault, not the camera. I agree with you. And if you're not shooting professionally, if you're not delivering to clients, uh, you don't need the rugged build or weather ceiling. Then there's no need to go for the higher flagship level cameras. I think the EPL8 is more than sufficient to get fantastic uh, shots. All right, before I uh, continue on with, with the 
comments. I uh, just want to give some updates. But before that, I want to drink some coffee. So just want to show off again my Canon L lens uh, cup. There's coffee in here. Hmm. Oh. All right, just some quick updates. Uh, I've been quite busy with shoots lately. I have a good job uh, on Monday. So I did a shoot on Monday and then uh, now I'm in the process of uh, finish, finishing up the, the edits to deliver to my client. And this week alone, I have two visitors uh, and from out of Kuala Lumpur coming to KL and I have to bring them around. Uh, we're going to catch up. They are my friends. So there's a lot to do. Uh, these are the things that's keeping me occupied. So I don't have the time to go out and make videos yet. But I did re recently purchase this. I'm not sure if you can see this. This is the uh, DJI Pocket 3. Let's see if I can turn it on. Right. <laughs> there you go. DJI Pocket 3. Ah. Yeah, uh, the reason I got this uh, is to replace my... Where is yeah, my Action 2 camera? Uh, this is the DJI Action 2, which I've been using mainly for my POV street photography. I'm sure if you have been on my channel, you have seen me do a lot of POV street shooting. I just bring my camera out and I record what's happening around me and in front of me using this Action camera. It has a wide angle capture to show you the moment before I click, how I compose my shots, how I interact with my subjects, basically to show you how I get my shots, right? how I compose everything, how I frame my, my subjects, uh, I base or how, even how I control the camera. So I I don't hold back I share everything like even before I click my shutter button and it has always been using this uh, DJI Action 2 but now I have this uh, I bought this DJI Action 3 no this is not Action 3 sorry Pocket 3 DJI Osmo Pocket 3 uh, to replace the Action 2 and basically it has a gimbal so stabilization is better it has larger image sensor it has one inch image sensor it has brighter lens f2 and uh, I also expect the video quality to be better. I expect everything to be better, but I have not had a chance to test this yet. Uh, I haven't been able to, to do much. I've been busy, like I said, uh, with shoots and edits and meeting my visitors, two visitors this week. And I think the soonest I can test the DJI Pocket 3 will be next Wednesday. I'll be bringing it out and maybe do some uh, POV street shooting for some new videos. I can't wait to do that. Uh, the main advantage uh, of this, the, the main reason is not just better video quality, but it can also do close up. Like uh, the problem with action cameras because they are fixed focus, I can't go close. So every time I want to do close up uh, video shooting to review details in certain products, say lens or camera, I will need to switch over to my smartphone, which is a hassle. I don't want to handle too many devices and then uh, for general shoots they have to switch it back to the action cam again and I find that interchangeably using the smartphone and the action cam it was a hassle right and I have to handle another camera which I'm shooting with so handling like three or four devices at once it was crazy so I'm hoping to simplify everything just using this uh, DJI Pocket 3 uh, just one device to do everything and I hope that it will work I, I don't know I don't know how well it will work I haven't tried it yet uh, I just got it uh, and I've just turned it on, activated it, charged it. Um, I haven't tried anything with it. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> now the subject of uh, favorite cameras my favorite camera is the EM1 Mark II. I've mentioned this. I'm going to mention this again. Uh, this is my main workhorse camera. I've, I've been using this for the past six or seven years. And more recently, I continue to use this uh, to replace the OM1. The OM1 is my backup camera because the autofocus is just not reliable enough. So the EM1 Mark II gives me uh, almost fail-proof autofocus uh, for the kind of photography that I do. I deliver my shots to my clients, fast-paced shooting, stage photography, uh, events, mini concerts, a lot of... Uh, theater work uh, everything we shot with this EMM are through uh, and autofocus works great image quality is fantastic I have no problem with low light dynamic range everything just works really really well and my clients are very happy with, with uh, my shots I like the beefy grip I like the dual dial uh, control on the camera I like the 4k video quality I like the viewfinder I like everything on this camera even the image stabilization works really really well now, if I am not doing a job, let's say I'm not doing anything serious, uh, the camera that I'll pick for my shutter therapy, uh, for micro four thirds, definitely is this uh, GM1. 
<laughs> for now. Uh, I know I have a few favorites. I have the EM10 as well. It's my favorite. But uh, for now, at this moment, is this GM1. This is my absolute favorite for street photography. It's so small, so light, so easy to handle. And I got really great results from this. I just like that it's so tiny. Right, uh, but logically, if let's say one day I quit photography, meaning that, oh, not quit photography, like quit shooting professionally. Let's say I, I don't take paid jobs anymore. I don't shoot for clients and I just do photography purely for fun. I don't think I'll ever quit photography in my life. I'll, I want to continue shooting until old age. Then uh, the kind of camera that I will use will be the EM10. I think EM10 makes more sense. Uh, it's small, it is light. I don't need the beefy grip anymore because I'm not uh, doing jobs and I don't need the dual cut slots. Battery is fine. I don't need long, long battery life. I think EM10, because it's a smaller form factor, it's lighter, it's easier for me to carry and yet it still delivers fantastic results. Auto focus is great and I really like the, the tilt screen versus the swivel screen for purely photography reasons, right? And I think EM10 would be my go-to camera. <laughs> Alright, just gonna drink a few sips of, get a few sips of my coffee before I continue with the comments. Mm. Alright, Zoltan says, Nice hat you got there, Robin Micro Four Thirds. Hey, someone noticed my Micro Four Thirds hat. How do you guys like it? <laughs> yes, I am still a huge supporter for Micro Four Thirds. Uh, although, you know, I a lot of people are saying, Oh, Robin, now that you're no longer an ambassador, you're a traitor. And um, when you're an ambassador, you say all the nice things about Olympus and OM system. Now that you're no longer an ambassador, you're trashing them. I don't think that's true. I have... So here's what's true. I have always been a large supporter for Micro Four Thirds. That's true. I believe in the Micro Four Thirds system and I want, I genuinely want Micro Four Thirds to succeed. That is true. I've always been honest in my reviews, whatever that I've said in the past, whether I was an ambassador or now I'm not ambassador, it has always been consistent. I haven't taken any claims or any reviews back. Whatever I said five years, 10 years ago, it is still valid today. It's very important for me to stay truthful. It's very important for me to keep my integrity in check. I don't change minds overnight. Not like some other photographers, right? Like today they are Nikon ambassador and tomorrow they, they come up with a topic. I have done my Nikon system. I'm moving on to Canon. And then the next day, oh, uh, Canon is no longer good enough. Now I'm with Sony. I'm not that kind of photographer. I've always been consistent with Micro Four Thirds. And just because I have some complaints, things that I don't like about certain cameras, and I reported them honestly, it doesn't take away the fact that I am a Micro Four Thirds supporter. I don't know, some people just, all they want to hear is everything nice, just praises and praises, and they cannot take any criticism. And I think that is very unhealthy to a point it's actually toxic. Do not just take everything like, oh, I just want to hear good things. Whatever that is not good, it's bad. Like, what? Like, seriously, there's no perfect camera. Every camera have, they have their own strengths and weaknesses, right? There's no perfect camera. And the only way for any manufacturers or brands or cameras to improve, to move forward, to get better, is to listen to criticism, is to listen to complaints, is to address the issues and existing problems, fix them, make them better, right? If we don't give honest feedback, how then is Micro Four Thirds going to improve? Anyways, <laughs> I think I got carried away there. Uh, wow, there's just a line there, so I don't know what your name is. What's up, Robin? Hey, hello from OZ. Ha, huh, nice to see you. I love my rangefinder styles. I'm an X100V user now since release, but I still adore my Pan F. I miss the image stabilization that the X100V doesn't have. Yeah, image stabilization is actually a very important component for imaging now, even for video, stills and video. So I can't imagine living without uh, image stabilization. Michael says Panasonic G9 with 12 to 60 for sure. Image quality not amazing, but good enough. This combination is light and reach is long enough for travel. The best thing is video and my preamp is amazing. G9 and 1260, really, really good combo. I can Yumi says DJI Pocket 3 looks so cool. Can't wait to see it in action. I don't think you can see it in action, but you do get to see the um 
the footage <laughs> that I'm shooting it with. Because I, I, I'm not, I don't intend to review it. Uh, I don't intend to say anything much about the camera. I just want to use it to produce my videos and do my POV videos, right? So like, but, but then again, having said that, uh, I still have like three POV videos done with the previous uh, Action 2 cameras. Uh, so if you see it in the future, there are some POV videos coming up. They are not from the Pocket 3 yet. Uh, it will be some time before you see the Pocket 3 content. Uh, but I can't wait to use the Pocket 3. Well, we are a little bit behind in terms of comments. I'll try to catch up. Mark says, I'm looking to get a camera to get intolerant the hobby. Probably the EM10. Would you stay away older on one slime Mark 1? Wow. Okay, there are no bad cameras, so buy whatever camera that you can afford. Even the EM10 Mark One, and I have it here, it's an excellent, excellent camera. So don't shy away from getting a, a camera just because it is too old. Just make sure it's in good condition. I mean, if it has like cracked electronic viewfinder or it has dents or it has too many scratches, then obviously they don't buy it, right? All cameras are great cameras. That's what I've been saying on my channel a lot. Anthony says, having a camera that's easy to operate when wearing with gloves is important to me when I live. It's not a common for me to operate my camera as cold as minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, so which is your favorite camera? Which cameras are easy to operate with gloves, Anthony? Uh, that's the discussion today. Which is your favorite micro four thirds camera? John Taylor says, I've recently started to dabble in micro four thirds and I now have two EP1s. EP2L, full spectrum, wow, with the infrared converted, plus 45 and a kit lens, along with a few 7 Artisans lenses. I'm having fun adapting all the lenses. I think both the EP1 and EP2 are excellent, excellent cameras. They look so gorgeous. They look amazing. They look minimalist, sleek, and uh, they just scream attention. I just want to pick them up and go out and shoot. Amazing choices. Zoltan says, hello from Maryland, USA. Hey, Zoltan, how are you? Eric says, my favorite is the one they haven't made yet. Something in the PanF style with advanced state-of-the-art software <laughs> optics ideally suited for travel and urban photography. Wow. <laughs> Having a favorite that is not available yet, that's really something. Hey, Santix. Nice to see you here. How is Kajang? Hmm. Santix says, EMR Mark II for me. Wishing for a smaller, casual micro photos camera that I would love. May I suggest whether the EPL 7, no, sorry, not EPL 7, but the EPL series, right? It can be the 7, 8, 9, or 10, or uh, the Panasonic G GF series, GF 8, GF 9, or a GM series like the Panasonic GM 1. I have fell in love with this camera. I think it's an excellent, excellent, excellent camera. Ed Duffy says, hello from Japan. Hey, Ed, how are you? Jack Attack MMA says, My favorite is my first and only camera, the GX9. I look forward to a potential Mark II. Yeah, hopefully they do make a GX9 Mark II. Hey, Ed Duffy says, Love the live shows. Thank you so much and thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it a lot. Anaki says, Hello, Robin. Hey, Anaki. I'm from Singapore. Hey, we are neighbors. How are you? I love my Iman X. I use it for wedding shoots. Amazing. I think Iman X is also an excellent, excellent camera if you have like larger hands. My hands, my fingers are not that long. I don't have very big hands, just typical small Asian hands. So, uh, smaller cameras like the EM1 series cameras, EM1 Mark II, uh, that suits me better. Toga says, thank you very much, Robin. I didn't know the sensor difference between the four-thirds and micro four-thirds until the live video. It's not the sensor difference. The sensor is the same, but four-thirds is DSLR, meaning that it has pentaprism, it has optical viewfinder, it has the mirror box, right? Whereas when uh, Olympus went mirrorless, when they went micro four-thirds, they removed the mirror box, they removed the pentaprism, they removed the optical viewfinder, so it became smaller and lighter, hence we have the micro four thirds system. It has nothing to do with the image sensor. Jack Attack MMA says, what are your thoughts on the Sigma 56 lens on micro four thirds portraits? I've never used the Sigma 56, I, I think that the focal length is a little bit strange. Uh, I would definitely prefer to work with something uh, not that long, like say the Olympus 45, f1.8 or f1.2 or even the panasonic 42.5 f1.7 or f1.2 i think that's more manageable unless you definitely want that compression you definitely want something longer because in equivalence that's going to be more than 100 millimeters uh, not that it's a bad uh, portrait lens but the longer your focal length the further you have to stand away from the subject and the 
important component in making a great portrait photograph is communication. When you're too far away from your subject, it's hard for you to communicate and that complicate things. Aurel says, hello from Germany. Hey Aurel, how are you? For me, it is Olympus EM10 Mark II and the EPM1. I think both are great cameras. Very small, very light, and very capable as well. Jose Canessa says, hi Robin. Hey Jose, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Following your speaking from Uruguay, South America. Thanks, thanks for being here. Appreciate that. Jack Attack MMA says, what do you think is the best reasonably priced and compact-ish lens for wildlife on micro four thirds? All suggestions from you and Chad are welcome. Well, two options I can give you. The Olympus 75-300, which I think is not too expensive. Uh, very compact, very light, and it gives 300 millimeters, which should be sufficient for general wildlife, unless you want extra, extra reach, then you have to go for more, more expensive options. The other option is the Panasonic 100 to 300. I think they have like what, Mark 4 now or Mark 3? I don't know. They have so many different versions now. Uh, the Panasonic 100 to 300, whichever version it is, I think it's a great uh, lens. Uh, depending on which, which camera you use it on, I think if you use Panasonic camera, then it's better to get a Panasonic lens. If you use Olympus camera, then it's better to get the Olympus lens. So Olympus 75 to 300 or the Panasonic 100 to 300. Robert says, Hi Robin from Latvia. Hey Robert, thanks for dropping by. Favorite is EMR Mark II. Came from Nikon D610 to Fuji X-T1 and now this. Love small lenses. I have 20 f1.7, 45 f1.8 and Lumix Leica 12 to 60, f2.8 to f4. Amazing selection of lenses. I think you can cover most, almost everything. And wow, have, having jumped from a full frame to APS-C to Michael for third system. We'll come to Micro Four Thirds. I hope you love the system. Norm says, my EMR Mark III is my favorite Micro Four Thirds because it's the only one I have. Great pair with 12 to 40, 25, 60, and 75 millimeters lenses. I think EMR Mark III is an excellent, excellent camera. I can see why you love it. Yigit Boilu says, happy with my EM5 Mark II, but should upgrade it to up-to-date model because of it's hard to find batteries. That's not true. Like where I am for the EM5 Mark II, we can still find the, the batteries quite easily, whether it's original or uh, there are also plenty of third-party options. I know the third-party uh, batteries may not last as long. It may have some quality control issues and after a while it'll get bloated, but they are so cheap. Like use it for a year or two, discard it and buy more third-party options. Right? I understand this is probably not good for the environment and we are killing the environment by doing so, but hey, it's rechargeable battery. So you know, if you buy one chip battery that can last you for two years, three years, why not? I think it's fair, right? Jose says, enjoying my e OM10 Mark 3S. EM10 Mark 3 You guys see what I'm talking about earlier? Okay, EM10 Mark 3S quality and portability. Yeah, EM10 Mark III S is, is a great, great camera. John Tebet says, Hi from south of France. My OM1 serves me very well for wildlife with the 300 F4, but I do have problems with out of focus tracking birds in flight. Felt that EM1 Mark II was better. Do you agree? Yes. I agree that the uh, EMR Mark II has better autofocus. Uh, that's what I've been saying in a lot of my videos. I made three videos talking about this. I said that EMR Mark II's autofocus is faster, it's more reliable, especially in low light and low contrast situations. And it has affected my job when I used the OM1. The autofocus was just not good enough. I missed critical moments, and so I don't use the OM1 as my main camera anymore. So the EMR Mark II becomes my main uh, shooting camera for jobs, and the OM1 stays in the back as my backup. Yes, I agree with you. The EMR Mark II autofocus is better. Yumi says, EPL1 was my first micro photo camera too. Love using it. I saw it to get an EM5. EM5 was a far superior camera. I sure you love it. Robert Mill says, Hi Robin. Hey Robert. Thanks for dropping by. I love my EM1X and EM1 Mark III to bits, but I enjoy using the Pan F despite all the focus being crap in comparison. I even have the EPL3, which I still enjoy with the 17F 2.8. Yeah, the EM1X and EM1 Mark III, they are amazing workhorse cameras, right? They just work. And the Pan F is just so lovely to use. 
GT says probably EM10 Mark IV, not the best, but so fun to use. Yes. And I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Hey, being fun to use. And a lot of people forget about the fun factor. They all chase technical perfection. They want like the latest full frame with like 100 megapixels with ISO 2 million and like uh, 20 stops of dynamic range. But at the end of the day, the camera feels, uh, feels like a robot, like a machine. It doesn't have a soul. It doesn't inspire you to go out and shoot, right? So to me, I'll pick fun any day over a technical perfection. Ahmad Dermawan says, Hello Robin. Hey Ahmad, thanks for dropping by. I have the EP3 and EM5 Mark II, but I use EP3 more often. Uh, may I ask the reasons why? Why do you prefer your EP3 over the EM5 Mark II? I would love to know. Dallas Photography says, Regards from Uruguay. Robin, hey Dallas. I didn't know you were online. Happy to see you and hope you are doing really well. In case you've missed it, uh, I've been doing live streams every Thursday night. Night is in like Malaysia time, right? Uh, Thursday night, Malaysia time. Uh, for the past six, five, six weeks now, consistently. So the arrangement is every Monday, I'll release a new video on any topics. It can be a camera review, lens review, it can be a POV street photography, it can be me talking about an older camera or I'll share tips and tricks on OMD cameras or photography or talk about random topics about photography, right? They'll be on Monday, followed by a live stream on Thursday. Uh, that's my arrangement now. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep this arrangement. I don't know if this is going to work. But uh, so far, it's doing quite okay. I will continue to do so. Anthony says, Currently right now, my favorite camera is the EM1 original with my favorite lens being 75 f1.8. Yeah, I think the EM1 original is such a fantastic camera. And somehow, I also wish that the EM1 Mark II or the OM1 maintains the size of the original EM1. I think the EM1... It has the right size. It's not too big. It's big enough to handle larger lenses and have that substantial grip, but it's not too big, right? I feel that the, the OM1 is breaching like too large of a camera already for micro four thirds. Robert says uh, Lumix G9, uh, maybe the G9 Mark II, and then Lumix uh, GX9. Yeah, very, very good cameras, very good choices. Acrylic says, I have the Lumix GX8085. It was cheap and so were the lenses, but I love the small size of it. I hope there's a good upgrade from it, which keeps the small size. Yeah, I think there's no reason why Panasonic wouldn't want to upgrade the GX series cameras. I think they are doing really well. They're obviously fan favorite. So let's hope they come up with new uh, cameras with updated specifications, maintaining the size and the sexy look, right? And of course, with uh, face detection autofocus. Anthony says, I have had canvases as large as 16 by 20 printed from photographs I've taken with my EM1 and nobody has asked which camera I used to take the picture with. Yes, I've also printed really large prints uh, from EM1 camera before. I think it was five feet tall, uh, portrait orientation. And yeah, nobody questioned why did I use a full frame camera or not. Jari says, I have had issues with the battery compartments doors of my EPL3 and EPL8. Ah, okay, so the EPL cameras are the ones that's falling out. So far, my OMD cameras have no issues with the battery compartment door. David Stewart says, my favorite micro four thirds is the EMR Mark II. It is the backup to my Z9. Interesting. So you're using the Z9 as your main workhorse, uh, rightfully so. It's a beast, I think. Uh, a flagship from, current flagship from Nikon and uh, EMR Mark II has become your favorite. Interesting. Jay Alvarez says, found your videos and that helped me dust off my EM10 Mark I and get back into photography. Just got a gently used EM5 Mark II and can't wait to get out there. Thanks for all your insight and input. No worries, Jay. I'm glad that I can uh, inspire people to go out and shoot. And at the end of the day, that's what I want to do. I want people to go out and take more photographs, right? And not just obsess about technical gear, not just argue in forums online, which camera is better, like, you know, and obsess about technical perfection, right? What we should do is just go out and start enjoying photography. Like, shoot, shoot actual images, right? This is what I want people to do. Ariel Lugar says, um, I love my Pan F because it's a gem. However, I take more often my EM5 Mark III for general photography. But for serious stuff, I love my OM1. Very good uh, choices of camera. Robert says, started with EPL7 and was blown away with the image stabilization coming from X-T1. Uh, then bought the EM5 Mark II but was faulty power switch and sent it back and now I'm enjoying the EM1 Mark II. Yeah, I think EM1 Mark II is a far superior camera in comparison with any other cameras that I've mentioned before that. Aoyagi says, for me the favorite is the G90. 
ideal in size and ergonomics for my hands and super pleasant dials to use. Very quiet shutter. G90. I've never encountered that camera before. Santix says, oh, do you have the G DJI Pocket 3 already? Yes, I have. Uh, my next video is not going to be the DJI Pocket 3. <laughs> it's going to be the next like five or six videos. I already have a lot of videos lined up. Uh, only I, I have three POV videos done, actually. And these three POV videos were done with the older Action uh, 2 DJI cam camera. Uh, so after all this videos are being released, then maybe there'll be like one or two. Uh, taken with the DJI Pocket 3. But I think possibly I want to do a low light POV photography with the DJI Pocket 3. That's been something that I want to do, which I cannot do with the older action camera. Action cameras are terribly bad in uh, low light situations. They, they just don't work. They give crappy, really bad footages, right? And finally, now the DJI Pocket 3. Uh, let me just quickly show you guys. Now with this DJI Pocket 3, we finally get a uh, one inch image sensor, we get a gimbal and we get like bright lens, uh, the F2 lens. And finally we can get decent, somewhat semi-decent low light video footage. So I, I can't wait to do POV shooting with uh, in low light using this uh, Pocket 3. I'm just gonna wait for it to power down. I'm gonna put this down. All right. Number six says, hey, number six, <laughs> nice to see you here. A question for me. Robin, when you said that the lens has poor contrast, do you mean the colors look washed out? No. Uh, contrast means the difference between light and shadow. When you have high contrast, you, you get a larger difference uh, or differentiation between the largest, uh, sorry, the brightest part of the image and the darkest part of the image. So you see more gradients or more details in between the shots, uh, in between the, the bright and dark areas, right? When you have uh, poor contrast, it's just flat. There's not much differentiation between the shadow and the bright area. Like the shadow is just shadow, the bright area is just bright. So you don't see a lot of grays, you don't see a lot of gradient. Uh, whereas if you have good contrast, you get to see the tones, you get to see all those details, the shades, uh, especially when it's transitioning between bright and dark area. Right. Rampov says, a uh, long time I was using Canon mirror cameras, but then I want something small to shoot action street photos. Great. Micro Four Thirds is definitely, definitely uh, a great option. Boss, roti telur bawang satu. I give you the roti telur cheese, right? They'll be better. Liquid Drip says, greetings from Singapore. Hey, another neighbor from Singapore. I really love the GX7, but I lost it in the Philippines in 2015. I recently bought a GX9 and I love it. I still love the colors of the original EM5 though. Yeah, there's something about Olympus colors that's just more lovable. I just can't quite explain it. I can't get along with Panasonic colors. And I understand this is uh, perhaps a biased opinion. This is perhaps... Uh, is individual and you know it's my preference is different from yours and it's perfectly fine Azam Mamad says, I think that most photographers hesitate to enter the world of Olympus because of the sensor size. Their sales would skyrocket if they produce cameras with a larger sensor. Maybe, but at this moment, it's also very hard to predict what will happen. Like if they do larger sensor, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will succeed. Uh, but I also recognize that if they don't do anything soon, uh, they will get into trouble. So they need to do something drastic. EG says, own the EM1, Lumix G1, G3, G7, G9, S5, a Nikon D750 for work, Fuji ST2, much more. I missed uh, Micro Four Thirds on my G9, but love film simulation. I use the Fuji X okay, lens. Uh, what lens do you recommend for G9 with the same feel? Well, 40 to 150 F28 Pro. Rampov says, and then I really want to buy a Ricoh GR203, but I don't have so much money that I buy a Panasonic GF3 with manual 28mm lens. I was in love with the first Micro Four Thirds camera and then I bought the EPL7. GF3 to EPL7, I think that's a huge jump. Much better autofocus, there's the tilt screen, touch screen, uh, better image sensor, which means you get better resolution, high ISO, and also dynamic range. Ian Bao says, my favorite camera is the Olympus OM-1 MD. OM what the hell is that? Is it the OM-1 or is it the EM-1 Mark II or is it... Man, you guys are... I, I Can you just type the names like 
the complete names without modifying the E to O or the Mark 1 to some other weird numbers, right? Rampov says, this is the best street camera for real. I almost agree with your video about EPL7. Yes, I think EPL7 is definitely a, a strong option if you want to do street photography. Sean Grogan says, while my EM1 Mark III is my personal favorite at the moment, I know a camera in the EM5, OM5 and the Micro Four Thirds F1.8 primes. I'll forever own if I ever switch away from uh, Olympus or OM Digital Solutions. Yeah, EM1 Mark III is definitely an awesome camera, but yes, the EM5 Mark III or the EM5 series cameras are also amazing. Sean says, hello from Montreal. Hey, Sean, that is really, really far away. Oh, we have a super chat. I missed that. Uh, Chua Tuan Hien. Thank you so much, Chua, for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Any, any small contrib contribution from you guys will definitely, definitely keep me going. And yeah, I really appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let me see if I have missed anything else. Okay, let's go back to the previous chat. Yigit says, what is the difference from a phone if there is no EVF? Well, the phone can't zoom. There you go. Claude says, personally, I've got the OMD5 Mark II and an OM10 Mark II. OMD5 Mark II? Okay, so you're talking about EM5 Mark II and EM10 Mark II. And for most of my photos, I prefer the EM10 Mark II because it's of its rare screen. So you like, you like the tilt screen. Yeah, that's what we've been mentioning earlier. Marcus Mark says, in my opinion, Micro Four Thirds is a dying system the moment Panasonic stopped releasing the Micro Four Thirds system. What are you talking about? Panasonic has just launched the G9 Mark II. It's not even on sale yet. It's on pre-order. And I bought like Panasonic lenses, which is just launched like one year or two, almost two years ago, uh, which is the 9 f1.7. I think Panasonic, just, and it's also very recently, they launched the GH6, which is like a, a flagship Micro Four Thirds camera. Marcus, where have you been? Man, you need to keep up with the news. I think you are very lost. Kathleen says, morning from Seattle. Hey, Kathleen, how are you? EMR Mark II is my favorite. It is my favorite as well. Marcus says, however, I like what Panasonic is doing with the G9 Mark II. You knew there was a G9 Mark II and you said Panasonic stopped releasing Micro Four Thirds system. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't understand you, man. Dennis Dimenez says, I have three favorites for shutter therapy. I enjoy the APL6. For vacations, I take the EM5 original, and for everything else, I have the EM1 Mark III. In hand, the feel of the EM1 is perfection. I agree with you. There is just something about the EM1 Mark II and EM1 Mark III. They are basically the same mold. They have the exact same uh, chassis, and there is the hand gripping area. They just feel so comfortable. Just like my hands just fit it so well. It's just so comfortable to use. Handling is second to none. RJ says, uh, the Olympus EM10 series are great value. They are often found at the same prices as advanced compacts like the GX7 Canon. That's true. And you get so much more from the EM10 series cameras. Glenn! Hey Glenn, how are you? I bought my first EM5 from Camera House Fremantle. Oh, I remember where that was. Upgraded to EM10 Mark III so I could get a 12100 Pro lens. I now have the EM1 Mark III. All traffic cameras and they are getting better and better. Yeah, I... The last time I was in Perth, that was in 2019, uh, I did go to the camera house in Fremantle, just, just to check it out. Chris Cantu says, I'm running GH5 Mark II specifically for the anamorphic settings. I'm shooting on a Siri 35 1.33 uh, times with a great joy, 1.35 times adapter for total squeeze of 1.8 times. Look like a movie. Hi from Thailand. Hey Chris! Yeah, GF, GH5 Mark II is, is a powerhouse for video making, right? For filmmaking. Mark says, no love for the GX85, perfect blend of features in a small body for travel and hiking. Love my EM1 Mark II as well. I think the GX85, the biggest complaint that a lot of people have is the uh, fuel sequential electronic viewfinder, right? It's small and it, it, it sort of like, uh, it flickers, it doesn't look very well. Uh, the experience using the viewfinder is just very poor. I, I remember that's the like, biggest complaint, but I haven't used one uh, extensively to make enough comments. Marco says, I'm Marco Ciao from Italia. Hey, Marco from Italy, how are you? 
Carl Richards, hey Carl, so nice to see you. Carl says, sorry for being late. Hope you are well. I'm doing fine and I'm doing especially good with this micro four thirds cap. Andre says, morning from Arizona. My favorite is Ian Fire Mark III. I love it for a video with 25 and 45 f1.8. Gives me great footage. No reason to change because it suits my needs, size, weight, quality of image. Yes. A lot of people don't realize that like micro four thirds is more than sufficient to do everything that they need. And everyone just wants something else because the other things just promise the latest and greatest and like better resolution, better dynamic range, more uh, control over high eyes, or they have this and that and all these features. But do you really need all these capabilities? Like I have been making YouTube videos for years using the EM1 Mark II, EM5 Mark III, and I don't wish or I don't see myself wanting more. I thought Micro Four Thirds is more than sufficient. I can see that I'm not even utilizing the full potential of my cameras for making video. Arthur says, hi Robin, bonjour from France. Hey Arthur, how are you? EM10 Mark III for steals and GM5, GH5 Mark II for video. Very solid choices. I think GH5 is a brilliant camera, but not as user-friendly as Olympus for taking pictures. I agree, I agree. TMI DD says, hello Robin, hello chat. Hey, I think I do follow you somewhere. You are, um, I think you are partnering with uh, Anthony. Anthony, if I remember correctly, I do follow him as well on YouTube. I do see you guys together in some collab or something. So nice to see you here. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Jack Attack MMA. I think it's a strange focal length of the Sigma 56 that is attracting me to it. That and the use price, of course. I appreciate your streams tremendously as a newbie. No worries. I do my best to share as much as I can in my videos. Uh, and if, if you feel like you want to try the Sigma 56, then go ahead. Give it a go. And uh, I will definitely encourage you to buy a used unit if possible so that if you don't like the lens, you can resell the lens uh, in the used market without losing too much money. Pinnacle Pete. Hey, Pete. So nice to see you. How are you? Pete says, Robin, you had the EMA Mark III, which is basically the Mark II with some added features. Yeah, you gave your Mark III away rather than your Mark II. Can you explain that decision? At that time when uh, that Jay, the generous donor uh, from US, he gave me the OM1, uh, I thought the right thing to do uh, because, you know, I received something completely free, right? And OM1 was a very high-priced camera. Uh, the only sensible thing for me to do to pay it forward is to give away my highest value camera at the moment. Also, I have the OM1, of course, because there was a gift to me, so I can't give the OM1 away. Uh, but whatever I had, the highest value at that time was the EM1 Mark III, right? Uh, of course, uh, EM1 Mark III, EM1 Mark II, it doesn't really matter. If I have the EM1 Mark III, I'm, I'll be very happy with it as well. I admit that it's slightly better than EM1 Mark II in some aspects, but uh, it's just me wanting to pay it forward and it's just me feeling the need to to give my, my highest value camera to someone else. And it happened to be my friend, Van, uh, who is making great use of the camera. He's a professional photographer. He does create content as well. So that's the only reason. Ed Duffy says, Robin, what is your wish in the next OM system flagship camera? Better autofocus performance. I'm not happy with the OM1's autofocus. Hui Williams says, answering Mark Kotner, yes, the GS80 is a great camera, only compromised by its compact size that limits external controls. Yes, all features are the best Lumix cameras, but takes more manual digging. I agree. Nail says, I have the Panasonic GH5 Mark II coupled with the Micro Four Thirds Primes works well for videos. I also use Nikon Full Frame and Fuji X system for stills. Amazing. Yeah, I thought that Panasonic is a powerhouse for video making, right? Jason! <laughs> Jason is a friend. I've known Jason since forever. It's time to buy a Micro Four Thirds camera. Jason, I think it's time for me to return the favor. I'm going to give you that one hour phone call to get you to buy a Micro Four Thirds camera. How does that sound, Jason? <laughs> Sebastian says, Hi Robin, first time watching the stream. I see that you always shoot Micro Four Thirds. I only have a Canon 90D. What are the perks of having Micro Four Thirds? I'm thinking of getting one because of the size. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, are you happy with your Canon 90D? 
if you love the your Canon 90D and it, it does what you want it to do, it gives you good results, there is no reason for you to switch camera systems. I don't encourage people to jump ship or throw away the current camera and just buy other cameras because other people tell them that the other camera system is better. Don't do that. However, if you feel that, uh, I'm just giving examples, right? Because I don't know you. So I'm just making assumptions. I could be wrong. So forgive me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, for example, if you think that, oh, my Canon DSLR is too heavy and it's too too large and I want to travel with something lighter and uh, smaller and easier to set up, then maybe you can look into, say, the Olympus EM10 series cameras uh, coupled with small lenses like small zooms or some small primes. Uh, not only that they're smaller and lighter, but I can assure you the image quality is just as good, if not better. And I can assure you that the autofocus is amazing. You get fantastic image stabilization in some computational photography, which the Canon lacks. For example, the live composite mode uh, and a lot of other things like silent shutter, which would be amazing. Uh, you'll benefit in some kind of photography that you do. Right. Feel free to explore the micro photo system uh, only if you're not happy with your Canon DSLR, but if the DSLR still works, don't waste money. Upgrading is not a good option. Just bring whatever camera that you have, go out and have fun taking photographs. John Glass says, I'm sure I'm quite the outlier, but I bought the original EP1. No, you're not. I think the EP1 is awesome. When it first came out, I still show it as my main camera. My other digital is the Olympus E30. I think EP1 is awesome. I recently had one, and the only reason I sold it off is because I don't want to have too many cameras, and I do love this Panasonic GM1, and I love it more than the EP1. Uh, of course, if you know, like, I understand some people would, would like to hoard cameras, they have like like 50 cameras or something, then of course, but I'm not the kind of person, I'm a minimalist. I don't, I don't like to keep things that, uh, that I don't use a lot, right? Right. Time check, wow, we are already more than one hour into the stream, one hour, 15 minutes, and we have 122 concurrent views at the moment. I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of you here. Oh, I'm gonna stretch my legs a little bit. Oh, getting a little bit cramped. Oh, hmm. oh, you gotta stay hydrated. Hey, I need my voice to continue making videos and uh, gonna drink more coffee. Coffee is life. Pro tip, a cup of coffee a day will make you a better photographer. Mmm, <laughs> so awesome. Carl Richard says, oh, I have two favorites, the G9 for wildlife and more intense work, the GX9 for street and casual work. My most used lenses are the 12 to 60 and 100 to 400, both Panasonic. Yeah, G9 for flagship, uh, sorry, workhorse for all the important shoots. And of course, GX9 for casual shoots. Makes sense. Norm says, do you think the focus issues on the OM1 can be fixed by firmware upgrade? No. If it can, they would have fixed it by now. Sean Gorgon says, 40. I think you're answering one of my previous questions. F are you saying you have 40 cameras? Wow. Okay. RJ says, Robin, do you wear glasses or use contact lenses when you're working with your cameras? Glasses. Always glasses. I don't, I don't wear contact lenses. Zach Benson says, the EM5 Mark II with grip and the 12-45 f4 is the camera lens combo I reach for almost every day. There is no bad micro photos camera out there. I love the system and the lenses are incredible. There are no bad micro photos cameras, I agree, but there are favorite micro photos cameras, right? That's why I'm asking what your favorites are. And I thought it would make a very good discussion. JB3DO says, Hi Robin, hey, N nice to see you here. How was the EMR Mark III's uh, autofocus in low light versus the Mark II? I think they're the same, exactly the same. And did you find it's improved face detection helpful during events? No. I don't rely on the face detection. I understand um, some cameras, especially Sony these days, the, like A7 Mark IV uh, or I don't know, A7R Mark V, the, the human face detection has become so reliable that it's like a default setting for a lot of photographers. I find that the EMR Mark III, the face detection is okay, it works, but still not 100% reliable and there are times that it missed the shot and I would still prefer to move my focusing point and place it exactly where I want and I never, never fail or miss a shot. So I trust myself more than the camera. 
Olivier Gadan says, hello. Hey, Olivier. Uh, hello from France. Robin and all community. Hope all is fine. I'm good. I'm good. I hope the GX 8085 with 20 megapixels face, face detection out of focus and weather ceiling, tiny camera, uh, both efficient in photo and video. Yeah, I think it's a great camera. Dell's Photography says, as I still use my X-T4, but I want a backup camera. Can you explain the difference between EM5 and EM1? Thank you. EM1 is designed to be a flagship, so EM1 cameras will have a beefier grip. Uh, and then the newer EM1 cameras will also have dual cut slots, larger battery, better electronic viewfinder, better stabilization. And the best of the best, right, it's always on the EM1. Uh, the EM5 is like a mini EM1. Uh, you still get the same image quality, maybe slower performance, but the battery is also smaller. And the camera is designed to be slower and more compact, so you lose battery size, battery capacity, it doesn't last quite as long, and you don't have dual cut slots. So if you wanna ask me, uh, then I'll ask you this question, like, are you gonna use the camera for a professional environment? Are you gonna use it for a paid job? Uh, if you are, then the EM1 series camera is definitely more suited for that purpose but uh if you're not if you just want to use it for casual vlogging or street photography or everyday snapshots then i feel that the em5 is a better camera mark says my favorite for filming is uh black magic uh, pocket cinema camera 4k em1 mark ii is my favorite all around I have sigma uh, the trio f1.4 primes M Zuko 12 to 200 and 8 to 25 zoom. Those are a lot of lenses. We'll upgrade to F2.8 Pro zoom lenses, but waiting to test the G9 Mark II. Yeah, the Black Magic camera is awesome for video. If you know what you're doing, I don't know what I'm doing when I'm shooting video, so I should not be messing around with a Black Magic camera. But yes, I agree. The EMR Mark II is an all round favorite. I love it. Martin says, can you use Panasonic 15 f 7 for portrait or family pictures in small rooms or indoor? And how bad is the distortion in case of that lens? Yes, you can, but it's not my favorite portrait lens. If I'm taking portraits, usually it'll be 25 f 7 f 8 or the Olympus 45 f 8 Obviously, these are not lenses to be used in small rooms. Uh, but in, if you have no choice, then 15 is a good option. I don't see any distortion. And if you are using micro four thirds cameras, Panasonic or Olympus, the distortion correction data is already embedded in the RAW file. If you shoot JPEG, it's already auto automatically corrected. If you shoot RAW, the correction data is in the RAW file and most modern software like Lightroom, Capture One, will extract this data from the RAW file and apply auto correction and you don't see any distortion anyway. Troglobic says, started with the EM10 doing macro and upgraded last year to OM5 because I wanted better image stabilization and resolution. I prefer the EM10 because it's lighter and simpler. Yes, the EM10 is definitely much easier to operate, uh, but I think EM5 is, OM5 is definitely more uh, powerful. Santix says, why with the Roti Tolo Bawang signboard? Santix, because I just ate it. <laughs> and I love it. Don't you love Roti Telo Bawang? <laughs> Claudio says, Hi Robin, hi all. Hey Claudio, how are you? Shad Apana says, I've been a Nikon shooter since I started in 2012, D7000 and four years later D750. I bought the original EM5 as a present for myself in 2016 and now thanks to you, I'm going to buy the EM1X second hand. Wow, I'm glad I can inspire you to go micro four thirds and I think you'll love the EM1X coming from uh, larger full frame cameras, right? Uh, EM1X is definitely a good uh, transition from your Nikon system. Stone Trunks says, my favorite micro four thirds camera is probably the EM5 Mark II and the Lumix G100. Wow, both very different cameras. I suspect they're using the G100 for vlogging. Yeah, and the EM5 Mark II for general shooting, right? Okay. 13 Kaus13 says, hi from France, Robin. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Tom Pantex says, uh, OM1 MD is an old film camera. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I, I was born in the digital era, so no film camera for me. Shad says, your tutorials have been amazing to help me to get the most out of the EM5 since I picked it up again this week. 
Thank you so much for all the great work you do on YouTube. Oh, you're, you're so kind. It has been an inspiration to me. I will continue to share as much as I can through my videos, whether it's me doing a POV shooting, showing you guys how I actually shoot and get my shots and compose my shots, right? Uh, camera settings and everything. Uh, I also continue to share tips. I have one tips video coming up for inset macro shooting uh, very soon, actually. Uh, I also continue to share tips and tricks on using OMD cameras, uh, optimizing your camera to get the best results possible. Uh, that's not going to change. Uh, but most importantly, I would encourage people to shoot more. And the reasons I'm making videos on this channel is to, to inspire people to pick up the camera and to go out more and actually shoot, right? Not just uh, stay home and you know start arguing with people online on forums and everything. I think that's kind of sad. So I want you to go out and shoot more. Ian Bauer says the Olympus OM One MD is a film camera. Ah, yeah, someone's just said that. Pinnacle Pete says Robin, it's time for more coffee. Cheers. <laughs> yes, it's time for more coffee. Can't agree more. Hmm. Ah. Yeah, Marcus needs a coffee. I agree. Eugene says hi, Robin. I love the EM5 Mark II with 25 f1.8 and 45 f1.8 on it, by which it has Type C charging and a Bluetooth in it. I think it's unfair to ask the EM5 Mark II to have uh, the Bluetooth and USB charging. At that time, most cameras don't even have any of these features yet. It was simply too early. We're talking about like uh, 10 years ago, like almost 10 years ago. Keith Rutledge says, hey, what's up, Robin? Hey, Keith, nice to see you here. Keith from Detroit. Yes, I love my, let me get it right, OMD EM1 Mark III. Yes, you should visit the States, man. We got uh, to get you here to do a forum. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'm not exactly keen on traveling. I think I've talked about this in my previous stream. Like uh, in the past two to three years, due to the pandemic and the lockdown, my business has suffered. Well, let's put it this way. I earned zero income from my photography business, right? And uh, the only thing that kept me afloat was my um, my YouTube channel, which surprisingly was monetized and it brought in a huge chunk of income, which kept me going so that I don't have to eat grass. Uh, so I have you guys to thank for, for me surviving the pandemic and the lockdowns, right? And of course, now the lockdown is over, everything is open, uh, business has resumed. Uh, I'm recovering, I'm recovering very well, I'm getting more and more shoots, but because of that two to three years, uh, zero income situation it will take me some time to recover financially and um, i'm doing okay it's not like i'm i'm not eating or anything obviously look at my body size i'm, I'm eating quite well it's just that um it will be irresponsible for me to travel that far out of malaysia to uh the states it's gonna cost thousands and thousands of dollars and yeah uh, even though let's say i have the money now just to spend it just like that is it's not the wisest move, right? So it'll be a while until I travel that far again. Potiers says, thanks for all. Robin uh, LUC from Brussels, uh, Fuji and Co, Google and more. All right. Burana, hi, good to see you. Hello, hello, good evening from Bangkok. So good to see you, Burana. Uh, Sudoki Matsui says, is it worth upgrading from EM5 Mark II to EM5 Mark III? Yes. From EM5 Mark II to EM5 Mark III, you get a new image sensor, uh, better resolution, about 25% more resolution. You get better dynamic range, better high ISO performance. You get much better autofocus because it has face detection autofocus, not just for stills, but also for video. You also get 4K shooting. Uh, you get better electronic viewfinder. You get better image stabilization. You get uh, basically everything is improved, right? Uh, from EM5 Mark II to EM5 Mark III, better image quality, better speed as well. You get uh, new Newer features like Pro Capture Mode, you get uh, what what else was there? The, the, there there's so many new uh, advancements or improvements in the camera that I can't even remember all of them now. Uh, basically, it's it's much 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 better camera. It's a huge upgrade from uh, EM10 Mark II. If you want to jump to the EM5 Mark III. Christophe says, hi from France. Wow, we have a lot of people from France today. Hey, hey Christophe, how are you? Uh, OM5 and Lumis GX9 for me and EM10 Mark 1 for my daughter. EM10, Madame Discover Olympus and love it. Oh, awesome. Keep them GX9 for when I have video and photo need. Very nice selection of cameras you have there. Scott says, Robin, how would you simplify uh, 
OM in my ma two menus. I think, like, okay, here's the thing. I've been using Olympus since forever, right? Since day one, and I've the menu system, the structure has largely remained the same. They still have the super control panel, so most of the important things are just run through the super control panel. It's just one page. It's very easy, very quick, and there are other settings that you can set on shortcuts. You can customize the buttons. You press the buttons for direct ISO. You press the buttons to go. You want to change with JPEG to RAW or anything. You can customize the buttons to do almost everything, and after you've done that, you rarely have to dive into the menu at all and even so if i need to dive into the menu because i've been using olympus from day one i've been using it for like 10 20 years right i'm so used to the menu i can operate it very very easily and very very quickly right so no issue whatsoever shut up Anna says to answer your question uh the original em5 is my favorite all right but the Eman x with a 17 fm2 is about to become a dream combo yeah Eman x is gonna be awesome Jim Giraffe says, I still love the feel of the GH4. I think GH4 is a great camera. Hey, underrated. All right, where are we? Brian Tan says, Hi, Robin. My favorite is Panasonic G9 and EM5. Hey, Brian. Nice to see you here again. Yes, the G9 is such an awesome camera. I think it's a lot of people's favorite. I think the G9 Mark II is going to be a lot of people's favorite as well. And the EM5 is still such a classic and it's the first serious micro four thirds camera. And I think because of its significance, that camera is, con is going to be continued. It's going to continue to be awesome. Yumi says, I still have the Lumix GF2, but I hardly take that out now. Yeah, the GF2 is also an awesome camera. Small, light, uh, autofocus may be a little bit slow at the moment, but still produces excellent image quality. Number six says, I don't have one, but the Canon 90D is one of the best cameras in history. Yeah, so like I said, if you like the camera, if the camera doesn't give you any problems, if you don't feel like the need to... If you don't feel like there's anything missing, right? Then I, I think you should continue using the camera. Van! Hey! <laughs> Greetings from Dumagute City, Philippines. Did I pronounce that right, Van? So sorry. Dumaguet. Dumagate. Dumagate. Dumaguet. Man, I'm so bad. <laughs> Hi, Van. How are you? When are you coming back to KL, Van? We need to catch up. We need to have some coffee and some hipster food. Hey, and maybe some shutter therapy. And maybe do some vlog. Looking forward to catch up with you, man. I miss you already. Van is a friend uh, in, in Kuala Lumpur, but he's from Philippines, of course. And currently he's back in uh, Philippines. So yeah, I miss him already. Gabriel says, I love the Pan F for street photography and OM1 for birds. My EM5 Mark II, despite its age, is still good for both too. Yeah. Pan F is just such a great camera for street, hey. And OM1, of course, it has that bird AI subject detection thing, which makes bird photography almost fail proof. Number six says, like, like, like. Thank you so much for the reminder. I really appreciate it. Steve says, hi, Robin. Hey, Steve. Thanks for being here. Nice to see you. I have the EM5 Mark I and EM1 Mark I. Want to upgrade? Falling in love with the EM1X or maybe advice to go to EM1 Mark III or M1. What are your thoughts? Thanks. I think there's no wrong choice whether you want to go to EM1X, EM1 Mark III or the OM1. Uh, if you shoot wildlife and shoot a lot of bird photography, OM1 is no brainer because it has the AI subject uh, detection, right? Uh, you have very large hands. Uh, you appreciate a beefy grip uh, or heavier camera. Then the OM1, uh, the EM1X is definitely a better solution. Uh, I personally would choose the EM1 Mark III because generally I think it's the right size for my hands. It handles really, really well. And it has all the features that I need. And I think the image quality is definitely good enough. And I don't miss anything uh, if I don't use the OM1. I think EM1 Mark III is more than sufficient for me. But hey, I am not you. So you have to decide for yourself which one is better for you. Andres says, hi, my first camera was the E500. You can't go any simpler than that. Taught me a lot. Still using it occasionally. Now I'm using the Pan F and G9. Also the A7 Mark II for my manual M43, M42 lenses? M43? I think you're talking about M42 lenses, right? Yeah. Pan F and G9, very, very popular combo. A lot of people have G9 uh, for the serious work and then they have the Pan F uh, for street photography or all the casual snapshots. You're not the only one. Yes, uh, you just mentioned it, right? M42. Uh, 
Sean says, sorry about the 40. I'm going doing some data science research and clearly put the 40 in the wrong Excel sheet. Oh my goodness. Guys, stop listening to this chat while you're working. Hey, I, I don't want to cause any trouble, any problem. My goodness. STNRCK64 says, Robin, hello from... Uh, from where? Okay, primarily using EM5 Mark 3 and EM1 Mark 3. I had an accessory grip on the EM5, but it adds bulk and weight, so I removed it. Out to me that the larger grip on the EM1 wasn't on the EM5. Alright. Uh, yeah, I think both are amazing cameras. EM5 Mark 3, EM1 Mark 3, perfect combo, right? If you want something more serious, EM1 Mark 3, if you want more casual, something uh, for everyday use, I think EM5 Mark 3 is a great solution. Marty says, my favorite is the original EM1 paired with the 25 f1.8, a lightweight and a small combination. Yes, I also think that EM1 is still a great camera today, although it's been 10 years since its launch in uh, 2013. I think today, if you want to use EM1 for anything, the camera is still more than sufficient to get the job done. All right, where were we? <laughs> Edgar Thiel says uh, EM5 or OM5 series is the best size for Micro Four Thirds. Agreed. I think they are getting like carried away with the larger bodies like OM1 and G9 Mark II, right? I appreciate the larger grid, but I also feel that overall the cameras could be like 20 or 30% smaller. I think the original EM1 strikes the right balance between uh, not being too big, but just big enough. Glenn says, thanks for your input and opinions tonight. I'll be tuning into your live session again next week. Thanks for dropping by, Glenn. So nice to see you. I know it's getting too late in Perth, hey. Yeah, good night to you. Being Wolfie says, do you get the distortion correction with the 15 1.7 when shooting on older bodies too, for example, the EM5? The distortion correction is embedded into the raw file. And uh, the raw file will extract the information for your uh, whatever software that you're using. If you're using the JPEG, then of course, it's already automatically corrected. Antonino says, Hi Robin, hey, how are you? Only for photography for landscape and astrophotography is better OM1 or G9 Mark II. Uh, first of all, I don't do astrophotography and I rarely do <laughs> landscape photography, so I'm not the right person to give you this answer. I have the OM1, so I can tell you that OM1 is a great camera as long as you don't do anything with critical autofocus or fast action or fast paced shooting in low contrast and low light, and you're fine. OM1 is a fantastic camera. But the G9 Mark II, I don't have it yet, uh, so I can't say anything about the G9 Mark II, it's not fair. Maybe there's some problems I'm not aware of, or maybe it's really good. I also can't tell you unless I've used one extensively. But I do think that OM1 for landscape, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Marty says, I also own the OM1 with the 12-40, to 40, but I find this combo a bit bulky and heavy. Uh, further, I do prefer a tilting screen above a swivel screen. I agree. And uh, that's the reason why when I'm not doing my serious work or paid assignment, I will actually bring out smaller cameras like this Panasonic Lumix uh, GM1 uh, paired with like, smaller lenses like this uh, Pancake kit lens or any of the small prime lenses. You'll keep the size and weight down. Marco, how are you? Marco Ciapetta. Uh, hi Robin, sorry I'm late. No need to apologize, Marco. I'm just so happy that you are here. So welcome to the stream. Favorite Marco for this camera is the EM1X. There's not beating the feel, symmetry, and build quality. EM1 Mark II is close second. Like, I'm, I'm assuming that you have like really large hands, so the EM1X suits you better. My my arms, my my fingers are not that long, so I don't have very big palm. So the EM1 Mark II actually suits me better. Martin says, what do you think about GS8, a similar size camera as first micro four thirds? Uh, I've not used the GS8 before and uh, I can't comment on that. But I would, if you're not doing anything serious, like if you're not shooting professionally, then may I recommend the EM, oh sorry, this is, oh, guys, this is a very, <laughs> I feel very stupid now. I've been, Holding this camera out, I said, oh, this is the EM10, EM10, but this is, I just realized this is the EM5. <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel so cheated. Anyway, so yeah, um, let's, let's put the EM5 away for now and pretend I didn't mistakenly take out the EM5 and show it and say it's EM10. Uh, I would recommend uh, EM10 series cameras to start with uh, for you, Martin. 
Linda says, Hi Robin, how would you compare the GM1 to the old Nikon one that you have? Uh, in terms of image quality, the GM1 is miles ahead. In terms of autofocus and performance, the GM1 is definitely better. It has touch screen, it has silent shutter, it has everything, right? Uh, it's just a superior camera. But uh, the Nikon one is, when I got it, it's also not fair to compare because both cameras came out about like, different times. Uh, the only reason I got a Nikon one is just to compare and also to see if that one inch sensor is good enough for street photography. Uh, for me, honestly, if I were to be entirely honest, uh, I don't hate the camera. I thought the camera works really well. And let's say I don't have any other cameras. And if I were to use the Nikon one for street photography, I can get shots that I'm happy with. I've printed uh, a photo book with the images from the uh, Nikon one system, the J1. And I have no issue with it whatsoever. But having used the uh, Lumix uh, GM1, and having seen how much better the autofocus, the image quality is, you know, technically this has like 16 megapixels. The Nikon J1 only has 10 megapixels and micro photo sensor is so much bigger. I can get shallow depth of field, better dynamic range and definitely so much better high ISO performance. Having seen all these capabilities and not to mention higher quality glass from Olympus, right? We have the 45 f1.8, we have 17 f1.8, we have all these amazing lenses, compact primes and it's just no way that the Nikon can come close to what the Panasonic or Olympus, uh, what they are doing. And it's no wonder that Nikon One system is dead. <laughs> kind of sad, but that's the truth. Hey, JB3DO says, thanks for the answer, Robin. That was a lot of help. Oh, my favorite is the EM10 Mark II. It's just more fun than anything else. And also reminds me of shooting my old E420. Yeah, EM10 series cameras is just so, so awesome. Jim Giraffe says, Robin, where did you get that lens cup? Uh, you mean this one, the Canon cup. So I bought this from an online shopping platform called Lazada uh, in Malaysia. I think Lazada is like what you guys have Amazon in the US. We don't have Amazon here yet. So it's, it's, I'm sure you can find this from Amazon as well. Just search uh, Canon lens mug or coffee cup of something, right? Uh, just bought this from there. It cost me about 20 ringgit. I think that's like four, four to five US dollars hmm. with some coffee. Hmm. Hmm. And Trick says, Hi Robin, I couldn't find that hat online. Did you make it yourself? Hmm. This micro filters cap. If I tell you where I find this, I'll have to kill you. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a secret I'll keep for now. Dallas Photography says, Robin, which of the Olympus cameras is better for macro photography? I think any camera is good for macro. It depends on how you do your macro. If you do a lot of handheld work, because uh, I shoot my insect macro. So you're talking about macro, right? But me, I'm talking specifically about insect macro, like shooting them in the wild. I'll prefer cameras that has beefier grip. So EM1 cameras definitely is my go-to camera because I need to securely grip my camera and steady my shot as I go close and get that macro shot. Whereas if I were to use other smaller cameras without the proper grip, it's just uh, less confident and less secure. So for me, any EM1 series cameras will be uh, appreciated. So yeah, number six says, in Japan, some college students actually eat grass. Wow, I don't intend to. <laughs> the grass in Malaysia is possibly poisoned. Who is Serafin? Hey, how are you? Nice to see you here, man. Always preferred the EM5 OM5 over the EM1 OM1. I have both the EM5 Mark III and the OM5 and was quite surprised the substantial difference in upgrades in the OM5 despite reviews saying otherwise. Can you specifically say what upgrades there are? I think the reviews are bashing the OM5. The main reasons are number one, the, the micro USB, like what's up with that, right? Uh, number two, they use similar camera chassis design where it's known to have a problematic tripod uh, issue, tripod mount breaking off. Uh, it's a known issue for EM5 Mark III and that problem is not resolved in the OM5, it's being carried over and I think that's a very serious design flaw which should have been fixed in the OM5 and they did not do that. Uh, and another complaint is that uh, the same image sensor, basically same 
same menu system like we would expect that newer OM system cameras would have the same menu system as the OM one but like why the hell are they going backwards now using the old menu system and other than that like I don't see any improvement same image quality same 4k video um, like I don't see anything new in that camera Keith says, okay, I'm going to have to buy you some coffee so you won't have to eat grass. I don't mind supporting you. Thank you so much, Keith. I appreciate it so, so, so much. Linda Mark says, as for forums, I like the cam ca camera diary. Formerly Serious Compact's forum is less about tech and more about photography. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with forums. I think uh, everyone there has just this something, they have personal agenda and they just want to do something for themselves and it's just it's a very toxic place I'd, I'd rather spend more time to go out and shoot terry says i love my em1 mark ii and em1 mark iii that said as a photographer for 50 years i think many get too caught up in the next latest and greatest bottom line is it's the painter not the paintbrush i agree with you terry and even like this em1 mark ii is now seven years old right it was launched in 2016. I still feel that it's more than sufficient for me to do whatever I need to do today in the year 2023. And we are coming to 2024 soon. I even shoot professionally with this camera. I have no issue delivering shots to my clients. So yeah, I agree with what you say. We, what we have now is, is more than enough. Yes, Saya says, hi Robin, I'm from Indonesia. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you here. Have you ever been, uh, have you tried Lens Baby on your EM10 Mark II? N no. Uh, I have tried Lens Baby on my DSLR cameras like long, long time ago, but never on my newer cameras. And I don't see, I don't know, I just don't see the excitement or the need or the want to try Lens Baby. I, I understand the tilt shift effect is quite interesting, but it's not for me. And again, uh, I've repeated this before. I'm going to say it again. No autofocus, no go for Robin. <laughs> RJ says, I would love to visit Malaysia again. Wonderful place for an interesting holiday. I was there backpacking around for several weeks in 92. I really loved it. Do come back. I think Malaysia is an awesome place. A lot has changed. Hey, we have a lot of new things happening here. Spam Bent Water says, Aloha Robin, hey, I used the EM5 Mark III with the Lumix 25 f1.7 and the Sigma 6C f2.8 for street photography. Perfect combinations. I also used the EM1 with vintage lenses like the Nikon 135 f2.8. Wow, all right. I think EM5 Mark III is definitely a smaller camera, more compact, definitely suitable for street. I mean, I understand why they have the swivel screen because it's designed as a vlogging camera as well. And I've been using it for vlogging. So I do appreciate the swivel screen, but for street photography, I would prefer the tilt screen. It's what we have all mentioned earlier. Del says, please give thumbs up. Thank you so much for the reminder. Appreciate it. Linda says, I'm content with my GF7 and GF7, except for the autofocus killing dog. But in some ways, I still miss the G5. So small, ug ugly, but great handling. Okay, okay. I, I have not called any cameras ugly. Except some Sony cameras. I think Sony cameras are ugly. But yeah. Subconscious Subverse says, Transition from Nikon to Olympus. Absolutely blown away by quality. Using Olympus EM1, uh, Zuko 60, Godox. Uh, determined to photograph for Nat Geo with Olympus to prove to everyone Olympus is king of macro. Well, we do have uh, Olympus photographers uh, shooting for Nat Geo, like official nas National Geographic photographer using Olympus. Uh, his name is Jay Dickman. Uh, I think he's amazing. If you have seen his photographs, I had one of his books. Uh, it's be for beginners, photographer beginners, right? And uh, if you have seen his photographs, he takes fantastic photos. Jay Dickman. Uh, fun fact, previously the National Geographic editor He's a photographer, of course, but uh, he was the National Geographic Editor-in-Chief in Thailand. He was an Olympus visionary. <laughs> That's how I know him, right? Because I was a visionary as well. So there you go. Olympus is making a mark in the world of uh, National Geographic, if, if you want to know. Linda says, greetings from Germany. Hey, good to see you. Brana says, right now I love using GF9. Oh, amazing camera. And the 2-32 kit lens, small and light. Very portable, very light, very compact combo. Gordon says, OM5 and G7, and pretty much any of the older Microfotus cameras, even if I don't own them. Have a great day from 
California, CA. Yep. OM5 G7, very, very good camera choices. Oops, not this one, sorry. All right. Nicolas says, Hey Robin, I'm looking for a micro focus camera to do street photography. I now shoot with an XE4, but I'd like a lighter setup for everyday pocket carrying it. What would you recommend? I thought XE4 is already very small. Like if you're going to micro four thirds, uh, if you're going to the Olympus or OM system choices, is either the EPL series, you can look into EPL9, EPL10, even the older EPL7, or if you really need a viewfinder, then I would suggest the EM10 series cameras. Uh, EM10, Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV, uh, any of those cameras, they are really small, really light. Find the smaller prime lenses to pair it with, then you get a killer combo. RJ says, just as well, Sean is not working at NASA. <laughs> Nicolas says, do you guys have any recommendation for a very light setup for street photography? I would love Equivalent 28 that I can take in my pocket and it's fast enough for the streets. Uh, if you can still find in the used market, maybe an EPM series camera from Olympus, EPM1, EPM2, or Panasonic. GM1 or GM5, they are really small, and then pair it with the Lumix 14 f2.5 Pancake. That is the smallest micro four thirds autofocus lens. So pair it with this smallish camera, you can fit it in your pocket, no problem. You get fast autofocus, incredible image quality. That will be a killer street photography combo. Aurel says, a bit off topic, you're doing so much for the micro filters community and increased sales, you should got, get some extra bonus from Panasonic and Olympus on systems for your work for travel to the US. Oh, you're too kind. Uh, I'm not doing this for them. Like, I understand that uh, whatever I do indirectly or sometimes directly, increase sales for both Panasonic and uh, Olympus or OM system, right? But uh, I'm not doing this for them. I'm doing this for the community. Like I share my passion for photography because I'm genuinely uh, loving photography. I want to share my joy of shooting with everyone. And I've, I have a platform to do so. It just happens that I shoot with Micro Four Thirds. And so I'm sharing my love for Micro Four Thirds with you guys, right? Uh, it, it helps with the sales. Good. Uh, I don't expect anything in return from Panasonic or On Digital Solutions. I was ignored by On Digital Solutions for a year. And well, I don't want to repeat the whole story. That's why I quit being an ambassador and it's so much better being on my own i can interact with you freely i can do whatever i want uh, and i still shoot with micro filters i still believe in the system i still love my olympus omd cameras i still love my panasonic gm1 and panasonic i have three Panas panasonic lenses now uh, i still continue to use micro filters for my jobs and for my personal projects and i don't see myself changing systems anytime soon but yeah i i, I do this because i genuinely love micro filters and i hope you can see that, right? <laughs> I don't need anything in return. RJ says, uh, talking to Nicholas, I use an EM10 Mark III with 17 f1.8 for urban environment photography. Very nice combo. Jose says, hello from Spain. Hey Jose, how are you? I have Olympus EM1 Mark II and a Pan F and I love both. I like to upgrade 12 to 200 lens and save money for a 12 to 100 f4 or 40 to 150 f4. I use the 12 to 40 f2.8. Which one would you recommend? If you already have the 12 to 40 f2.8, I mean, I suggest you get the 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro. It makes more sense. If you go to 12 to 200, it's going to be a step down in terms of image quality. The 12 to 40 is such a superior lens. It's a pro lens. The 12 to 200 is not a pro lens. 12 to 100 is an excellent lens. It's sharp. It's versatile. Phenomenal zoom range, but it's f4. So you already have an f2.8 lens. So in a way, by going to an f4 lens, it's also a downgrade. You get what I mean? Uh, 40 to 150 f4 is okay, but uh, I'll still push for f2.8 if you can afford it. Uh, instead of having 12 to 100 f4, which is not a small lens, plus uh, 40 to 150 f4, why not keep your 12 to 40 f2.8 and add a 40 to 150 f2.8? I think it works out the same anyway. RJ says, no worries, Robin. There is a very little difference in size between EM5 and EM10. Not visible, but not significant. I feel so... I don't know. I, 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 I feel like a, a, a fool, right? Keep holding the camera and say, hey, look at my EM10. But it's actually an EM5. <laughs> 
Shad says, my first two lenses for em one x will be the 17 f1.2 and 12 to 40 f2.8. Very good choices. Do you recommend anything else? I will concentrate on the headshots, portraits, maybe corporate events. I never want to do weddings again. Uh, if you do a lot of headshots, uh, tight headshots, then can I suggest a 75 f1.8? Hmm, think about it. Shad says, Am I better off buying another prime instead of uh, 12 to 40? It depends on your photography hey, and what lenses you already have. Uh, prime lenses have their places. Uh, zoom lenses also have their places. And 12 to 40, uh, I believe, is a must-have lens if you are a professional photographer. And I personally use mostly prime lenses for my shoots because I appreciate the shallow depth of field rendering and the brighter aperture like f1.8 or f1.4 or f1.2. I have better control in low light. Um, I don't have to bump up my high ISO numbers crazily, right? Uh, but still, I always, always also carry the 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro. It's a versatile lens. In some situations, it just works. Just one lens to do everything. Being Wolfie says, I love the optional grip for the EM5. When attached to the EM5, it actually feels better in my hand than the EM1. Okay, uh, that's true. I think the EM5's grips is a very good implementation because it has a horizontal grip and then a vertical grip, right? It's like three different configurations. But having said that, uh, if you have tried the EM1 Mark II's grip, uh, I understand you were referring to the original EM1 Mark I, but if you try the EM1 Mark II's grip, man, this grip, nothing feels like, it just feels so good. Okay, Linda says, oh wow, I have the GF7, same interior as GM1, and thought I might get better autofocus with a Nikon. No, definitely not. I thought GM1's autofocus is way better. Gordon says, great comment from Terry and, and you about how we can all get so focused on new gear, we forgot about getting out and looking to shoot with wonderful gear we already have oh, for breakfast. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's something we just get so caught up with gear obsession, like wanting the latest and greatest and obsessing about technical perfection. But at the end of the day, all these things, they don't matter so much. It's more about you going out there and actually getting the shot, right? And when you're actually shooting, you forget about a lot of these technicalities. And when you look at the photographs, it's the story that you're telling. It's the decisive moment, right? It's the idea, the emotion that you are conveying through photographs. These are more important than high eyes or noise, dynamic range or sharpness, right? Yeah. Well, Bigong says, my first Olympus was C7070 and now using the EM5 Mark III. What I love about Olympus is that I can get set the arrow keys to adjust shutter and aperture. This is convenient for me when I use them underwater. Yes. I think Olympus has very solid underwater system. Uh, they have been doing underwater photography gear for so long, right? Serpent says Panasonic has upgraded its 100 to 400 lens. Have you tried it on an OM system body? Panasonic in Malaysia is non-existent. Like, I don't even know where to find these lenses and cameras, right? Uh, I'll just give you an example. I wanted to buy the Panasonic 9 f1.7 when it was launched like one or two years ago. And I waited like for almost one year. And I waited and waited and they said, oh, it ran out of stock. And they didn't even bother to say, hey, um, do you mind if we put you in, you know, the, in what you call that waiting list. And if, if the new stock comes, then we'll come back to you with the, cam with the lens. They didn't even bother with that. They said, oh, we don't have the lens anymore, it's sold out. Uh, so what I had to do was I had to go and find one overseas. So I bought my Panasonic 9 f1.7 from Hong Kong. That's how bad the situation of Panasonic is in Malaysia. And I, I, I sort of give up already on them at this point. Like, and it's, 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 if you're asking if we can get any new gear to try, <laughs> then it's like, I'll get struck by lightning first. Or I'll probably win a lottery first. Who is Seraphine says, OM5 improvements over EM5 Mark III. Image stabilization, handheld, high resolution, visual menu for program buttons, better face detection, better video options. I know I'm forgetting something since I am working. Yeah, but these are not deal breakers, right? Like, I, I, I can perfectly use my EM5 Mark III. I have no complaint with the image stabilization. I don't use handheld high-res shot, like... 90% of the things that I should move, so <laughs> the high res shot doesn't work. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't trust the face detection, like seriously. It, it's the same face detection as the EM1 Mark III, if you ask me. So it's not the same as the OM1, so it's still not that reliable, so I, I'm not missing much. 
Number six says, Robin, I found your channel during the lockdown when I decided to take out photography as a hobby. Your videos really helped me a lot. Thank you so much for letting me know. And thanks for staying all the way until now. Now it's like we, we don't have lockdown anymore. Everyone is out and about doing the things, right? So thank you so much for being here still. I appreciate that. Jens M says, and sideways observation, size-wise, I prefer Lumix lenses being smaller, particularly the F2.8s and kit zooms and Ollie bodies being smaller and fuller featured than their Lumix counterparts. Uh, Lumix lenses are not necessarily smaller all the time. Uh, for example, the Pan uh, Olympus 45 is smaller than the Lumix 42.5. Olympus 25 is also smaller than the Lumix 25, the F1.8 and F1.7, if you compare them. Uh, and uh, the Olympus 40 to 150, I don't think there's an equivalent. Lumix lenses are larger. So I, I don't agree that Lumix lenses are smaller, hey. But don't get me wrong, I love Lumix lenses. I personally use Lumix 9 f1.7. Nothing replaces that at the moment. I also have the Panasonic, uh, the Lumix 15 f1.7. I think that's an excellent, excellent lens for wide-angle street photography. Durio says, unpopular opinion, but I say G100 is a fine camera. The dynamic range from the 20 megapixel era was a huge jump from the 16 megapixels, compact light, and still has electronic viewfinder. Yeah, G100 was shadowed by false marketing. I think the biggest problem with G100 was the lack of image stabilization uh, in the era where everyone has image stabilization now from, let's say, from Olympus. Even Sony and Canon, they have image stabilization, right? And G100 not having it is not helping things, especially they market the camera for vlogging. Like, you expect vloggers to have sh shaky footage? No, that doesn't work. Being with you says, thanks for all your videos, Robin. I always enjoy and appreciate them. No worries. Thanks for watching them and thanks for dropping by and thanks for being here. I appreciate that. J.A. Almazza says, OM1 for job and GM5 for fun. Ah, perfect combination, right? OM1 for anything serious and small cameras like the... Yeah, you have the GM5, but this is the GM1, almost the same size for fun. It's such a small fun camera to use i agree with you marco says robin your em1 mark 2 or mark, quick, mark 3 quick setup videos were really helpful for users new to olympus any chance you do similar video for om1 well the thing is i haven't used the om1 well uh, the thing is i've used it for a few months and i wasn't happy with it so it no, it's no longer my main camera. It has been downgraded to my backup camera. <laughs> so my main camera is uh, my EM1 uh, Mark II and uh, OM1 has become my backup camera. So I don't use it uh, very often these days. And it has become my webcam as well. I'm showing, you guys are seeing me through the OM1. So yeah, that's the reality because I don't use it so much. So yeah, no quick setup video, I guess. Like, I don't know. What well, Begone says, currently I have the 714, 12 to 40, 9 to 18, 30 macro, 60 macro. Next one, probably 40 to 150 F4 Pro. Yeah, very good lenses. I think you cover uh, almost complete range of coverage from ultra wide 7 to uh, now you want to go all the way to 150, right? That's seriously wide coverage and you have two macro lenses added to the mix. Personally, I, I have no issue with, with your selection of lenses, but uh, again, this is a personal uh, preference, right? I would prefer to shoot with f1.8 or brighter lenses because I deal with a lot of low light. So the brighter Aperture Prime lenses will help me to gather more light without increasing the high ISO unnecessarily. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I bought the G9 Mark II tomorrow. Oh, congratulations. I hope you enjoy the camera. Jens M says, there are rumors about the G100 Mark II with image stabilization, 26 megapixels image sensor, and the new autofocus system. They better do that. I think uh, that will be a great vlogging camera. I think these days, vlogging is all the rage. Uh, a lot of people don't just take photographs, but they, they buy cameras to make videos, uh, video content, especially for YouTube, uh, for TikTok, for IG, and having a powerful camera uh, with the right features for vlogging, for video content creating, right? Uh, 
obviously you need image stabilization obviously you need very reliable autofocus because most of us are one man crew when i set up a camera i just want to hit the record button and don't have to worry if i'm in focus or not i just let the camera do the auto focusing right figure everything out for me so yeah i hope the g100 mark ii comes out it'll fix all the problems from the g100 uh yeah that will be really really awesome JJ Z says, my favorite is the EM5 Mark II because it is the perfect size for street travel and hiking and has the best build with the magnesium alloy uh, weather suit body. Plus, you can get used one for a very cheap price. That is true. Uh, I will only have one advice. Although it is a weather suit camera, but because the camera has been around for so long, it's been like nine years, coming to 10 years now, uh, the weather ceiling will somehow be compromised. The ceiling, whether it's rubber or some synthetic seal, uh, will not last forever. It will lose its integrity. It will either melt or disintegrate over time. And because of that, uh, if you're running the camera under harsh weather conditions like rain or in dusty environment, those water or dust can get into the camera because of the compromised ceiling. So yeah, just, just be aware of that. Like anything more than like five, six years, just don't, don't trust the ceiling anymore. <laughs> All right, uh, time check. We are two hours into the stream and we still have about 100 people watching the stream. That is amazing. That is crazy. I'm going to sip some coffee and drink some water. Ah. Mm. Oh, man. Ah. <sighs> mm. Oh. Also, one thing about um, like street photographers in Malaysia, right? Because we do a lot of our shooting out outdoor under the hot sun and in tropical weather, the temperature can get really hot. It's very humid, so we sweat a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people forget to drink water. <laughs> Staying hydrated is very, very, very important uh, so that we stay healthy and we don't fall sick easily, right? So yeah, I always remind my friends to either carry a bottle of water or you can stop at any convenience store and buy some water just to stay uh, hydrated, right? Just drink more water. Because we do sweat a lot uh, in Malaysia. It's a very humid country. Well, Bigon says, thanks for all your videos. No worries. It's my pleasure to make them and share them here. They were great help when I decided to pick up the EM5 Mark III. My lenses range were mostly for underwater work. Uh, still, once in a while, I felt the need for telephoto on land. Yes. I think having a telephoto lens uh, is definitely uh, a must. And... Uh, I'll have the 40 to 150 with me most of the time, but uh, I also have to admit that more recently I use the excellent 75 f1.8. I know that uh, it's not exactly long enough, but 150 equivalent is quite long. And especially if you are the official photographer, you do get to go really close on stage or to to whoever wherever you want to shoot. You have clearance, right? So 75 is a lot to work with. If it's not enough, then I have the 40 to 150, which is an excellent zoom. Uh, but I prefer the 75 because it's f1.8. It allows me to control the shallow depth of view better. I can get blurrier background, isolating my subject a little bit better. And because it's f1.8, I have a huge advantage, especially if I do low light shooting, uh, environmental, available light, without the need to use flash. So yeah, I've, a telephoto lens is definitely a, a need. RJ says, I can see you in a teaching role, Robin. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Uh, when I was working for Olympus, that was so many years ago, and then, and I quit, and then I was involved with them for a while as the Olympus visionary. Uh, this was when Olympus Malaysia was still around before GIP bought over Olympus. Uh, I did conduct a lot of workshops for Olympus, uh, basic photography workshops. I did street photography outings. I did macro shooting, inside macro photography outings. We do get like, we go to the Kuala Lumpur Bird Park to, to shoot some birds. Uh, we, we had a lot of uh, photo walks and uh, workshops. I also conducted basic flash workshop. Uh, but having done so many workshops for Olympus for maybe two to three years, uh, at that time, I've learned a lot of things about teaching and I've realized that um, teaching is not for me. 
Like I enjoy sharing my knowledge. I en enjoy sharing my passion of photography, but I don't see myself as a very good teacher. Uh, hear me out. I, I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> I think the prerequisite of being a good teacher is you have to be patient. And I, I, it takes an immense amount of willpower in me to not snap at my students for not understanding certain concepts or understanding what I'm trying to convey or, or I, I don't know, it's just, I just want to like, like strangle them sometimes but i understand like everyone is uh has to start somewhere and we all come from different background and some people can understand some things faster than the other i just had to be patient and it took a lot out of me to be patient and every time after like a half day workshop four to five hours workshop i would come home completely like i would be i'll just die on my bed and I can't function for the rest of the day. It took everything out of me to teach. And I, I because of that, uh, for my mental health, <laughs> I, I don't think I should be doing any teaching, right? John Davis says, I have the OM1 and will be interested in your thoughts on macro lenses. Thank you for all the good work. I would highly recommend the Olympus 60 f 2.8 macro. I think it's an excellent excellent lens if you need more magnification you can always add on the extension tubes or macro converters but start with the 60 f 2.8 is sharp it is fast if you use it on om1 you can have focus stacking you can have all the goodness of whatever the camera brings the image stabilization works wonders you have autofocus everything about that lens is just marvelous it is one of the sharpest lenses for micro four thirds uh give it a try it is not expensive i think it is very reasonable for what it is All right uh, olympus 60 f 28 spam bin water says i come from berlin germany i prefer to drink coffee straight water only if coffee is not available <laughs> Well, the water is just to keep me hydrated. I'm sweating a lot, although you can't see it. Uh, and every time after my stream, uh, which I do every Thursday, it felt like I've run a marathon or I've done like a 10 kilometers uh, jog in a park or something. Uh, it's quite exhausting, right? So drinking a lot of water helps with, with the hydration, helps with everything. Suri Surianto says, hello. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much for dropping by. How are you? Huri Serafin says, does Malaysia have a cooler season? No. So I was, we only have one season all year long, hot and wet. So it's very hot when the sun goes up and it's raining all the time. Sometimes it rains so much that uh, we actually get floods and that's a problem here. <laughs> Number six says, actually, patience is willpower. But I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I do think that I have, uh, my willpower is quite okay. Like I, because I know that if I'm determined to do something, like if I set my mind to do something, I will do it and I will get it right. Uh, especially this YouTube channel, right? It takes a lot of willpower to, to make videos and discipline to make videos week after week. And I have not stopped making videos for four years straight, except for the final week in December. I usually take one, one or two weeks off. But throughout the entire year for the past four years, I, I release new videos every single week without fail. And that takes some determination. That takes a lot of willpower to, to make it happen, right? Yeah. Durio says, as Southeast Asia citizen, we have four seasons too. We call it 4H, hot, hotter, hottest, and hurricane. <laughs> well, at least we don't have hurricane in, um, in Malaysia. I understand some countries like Hong Kong or um, Philippines, uh, you do get like a hurricane. Uh, we don't get that here at least. Bing Wolfie says, you're making that water look really good. Yeah, water is good. Hey, we should drink more water. It helps, uh, drinking more water, it helps help us with, with our health generally. Bing Wolfie says, I just realized I'm about five minutes behind on the stream. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Am I lagging that far behind? I hope not. I thought it's only like about 10 seconds lagging behind. 
Well, Bogon says, uh, another Southeast Asia citizen, I'll say we have only two seasons, hot and dry, hot and wet. Well, it's just hot and wet in Malaysia. Eh? Yeah, sometimes we do get hot and dry, but it's rarely dry. It just rains and when it pours, it pours like crazy. <laughs> and well, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the weather. I understand like some countries, they have it worse. At least we don't, like in Malaysia, we don't have earthquakes. We don't have to worry about uh, strong winds. We don't have to worry about this severe weather, right? So yeah. Being Wolfie says, no, I had to pause to take a phone call. Ah, oh, don't worry so much, Wolfie. Uh, you can always come back and watch the stream later. So no issue whatsoever. You don't miss anything, hey. Time check. We are about uh, more than two hours into the stream already. Wow. <laughs> and there's still more than 100 of you here. That is a lot of you. And um, I think everyone has shared their favorite cameras. Like I've shared my favorite camera is EM1 Mark II. Uh, definitely, I love my EM1 Mark II for my professional shoots. It is still my main workhorse camera. Uh, if I'm not, this is my EM1 Mark II. Image quality is still excellent. Autofocus is amazing. OM1 is my backup because I find that the EM1 Mark II's autofocus is better, uh, at least for the type of photography that I do. Right? It has all the features that I need. Uh, and if I'm just shooting for fun, then of course, I'll just use smaller cameras like this. Uh, currently, my favorite is the GM1. And, and here's the thing, right? Our favorites can change. Like today, I love the GM1. Maybe uh, two months later, I will prefer another different camera. Maybe it will be a Panasonic GX something. I don't know. Things can change, right? And we don't have to stay with a favorite forever. Like our tastes can change over time, right? And that's the beauty. We have options these days. Not so bad. Number six says, in Los Angeles, there are four seasons, fire, mudslide, earthquake, and night. <laughs> Man, that sounds really serious. Hey, just going to continue drinking my coffee. Mm. Okay, so I'm caught up with the comment finally, and that's great. So I would like to take this opportunity to... Um, to do two things. Uh, number one, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, you guys are awesome. And I always say this, I should say it more. I don't think I say it enough. Without you guys, there's no Robin Wong. So I appreciate you being here. And uh, some of you uh, have actually wrote in the comments saying that my videos are helpful and they inspire you to go out and shoot and it actually help you, uh, especially when you just got an Olympus camera. So I'm very glad that I'm able to, to be a little bit of help to the community. I will continue to do so. Nothing is going to stop. So I appreciate you guys being here and supporting me all this time. Especially there are some very generous people out there uh, buying me coffee, a lot of you have uh, sent me direct contributions through PayPal. Uh, all of this actually helped me to continue making more content. Uh, if you don't realize my content or making video, it actually costs money and everything comes up from my own pocket. And I've just mentioned I'm not doing particularly well. I'm not exactly rolling in cash, especially in the past few years of the pandemic. I have zero income for my photography business. So you guys here supporting me, that's like the best thing that's ever happened in my life. So I'm here only because of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, number two, I want to take this opportunity to ask you guys uh, questions. Now, what are the content that you want to see me produce in my coming videos? Uh, let me know what kind of content. Like, I understand there have been some requests on doing post-processing, uh, how I edit my photographs. Uh, trust me, that's in the works. I'll maybe do something. Either I'm going to do it in this live stream, like we can talk while I edit the photos, I show you how I edit my photos, and you can ask questions, right, immediately. Or I can do like a pre-made video on how I edit my photos. That is definitely coming. Or any other topics they want to talk about, like maybe what are my optimized settings to shoot portraits or... Uh, what are my tips on, on shooting night uh, street photography or something? Let me know uh, what you want to see uh, happen on my channel. I'll try to listen to more of you. After all, you guys, I'm only here because of you guys, right? So you guys got to give me feedback on what you want uh, to see on my channel. RJ says, I was caught in a flood in 1992. If I recall correctly, it was the town of Johor Bahru. Yes, JB. Uh, up to my knees, water, uh, flood water walking down the street. Yeah, it does flood a lot in Malaysia. It's, it's a consistent problem. 
RJ says, take care until next time. Oh, nice seeing you. Thanks for dropping by. HR Munro says, can't beat the polar regions. Only two seasons, cold day and even cool the night. <laughs> My goodness. Span Bent Water says, I used the Tokina 100 F2.8 on my EM1 for macros. It's still left over from my Nikon days, and since you don't need autofocus, it makes sense to continue using it. That is true. If you don't need autofocus, if you're okay with, uh, with manual focus, you can adapt all kinds of lenses for macro photography, and these older lenses, they work so well. And I think that 100 f2.8 is excellent because 100, it gives you a lot of reach, right? Like you don't have to go so close to the insects, you have more working distance between you and the insects and still get a lot of magnification. Daniel says, I tried to buy the original Olympus EM1 for under 200 for on MPB before my vacation, but the listing was wrong. I didn't end up getting it. Would EM1 with kit lens be good for travel photography? Yeah, I think EM1 is definitely a good choice for travel photography. I think EM1 is very small, very light, uh, but I would personally recommend something even smaller like this Panasonic GM1 or uh, Olympus uh, EPL series cameras or EPM or or even Panasonic GF series cameras, even smaller, even lighter, uh, less uh, footprint to work with in your camera bag. Number six says, show how you edit your Lumix photos to fix the color cast. I have no issues showing like my post-processing workflow. Uh, definitely it's coming in one of my future videos, but uh, I, I couldn't fix the color cast in my Lumix cameras. The color cast is still there. Like um, there's this very weird purple color and it affects the skin. So when I get rid of the purple, let's say I reduce the magenta or purple, it just affects the color balance of the entire photographs. Everything looks wrong. So it's very tricky to, to fix the color uh, on, on the Panasonic uh, the images and I haven't figured out how but then again um, these are older cameras like this GM one so I hope they have uh, addressed this issue and the newer Panasonic cameras don't have these weird color cast issues anymore <laughs> right uh, wow there is still a lot of you here there's like 95 people watching now yeah guys let me know uh, what are the things that you want to see on my channel besides uh, editing? Yeah, if, is there anything else you want to see? <laughs> We're going to drink more water. Always good to drink more water. Hmm. Hmm. And if you guys don't know what that light box is showing, it says Roti Telo Bawang. So basically, roti telo bawang is uh, bread with egg and onions. It's basically a flat bread, which is very popular in Malaysia. And uh, they put inside the egg with... Uh, sorry put inside the bread with eggs and onions as the condiments and it's so so good it's like one of the things you must eat if you are in malaysia all right Oriel says i would love to see a video about stereoscopic photography in general or lens 3d or micro four thirds i don't do uh, 3d photography so it's not something that i can talk about because i don't have the expertise in in, in doing this. Like I'm not one of these YouTubers or uh, content creators out there who just claim to be an expert in something, whereas they are not. Like the, see the things that I talk about, street photography or when I do stage photography or macro, I'm actually, I consider myself quite experienced in them. I've been doing them for the past 10 years. So I can draw from my real life experience to talk about the kind of images that I shoot or share the tips on how to get better images in certain situations, right? So there are things that I've, I've not done, like I, I'm not a wildlife photographer, so you don't see me doing any wildlife photography or talking about them. Uh, so certainly 3D photography is not something that I can talk about. Nice suggestion though. I think it's a very interesting topic. Maybe, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll look for some friends. Maybe I can get them to talk about on my channel. 
And Trick, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, you are too generous. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate that. And like I said, any small contribution from you guys goes a long, long way. Uh, will help me to continue making content because let's face it, uh, creating content, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes resources. Uh, and none of this is free, right? Uh, so I everything comes up from my own pocket. So any contribution from you guys will definitely help me uh, to produce better content in the future. It will keep me going, definitely. Defense Dad says, right now my EMR Mark II is my favorite in the collection. Yes, EMR Mark II is my favorite too. You're not alone. Richard Koss says, I have the EP5, uh, talking to Daniel, which is a good camera. Yes, EP5 is also an excellent, excellent camera. Tanker Bruja says, my favorite camera used to be G9, but now the G9 Mark II improves everything and gives uh, face detection a focus and real-time LUT like I love in my S5 Mark II X. Yes, I think the G9 Mark II is a significant step up from the G9. It's going to be a lot of people's favorite moving forward. Daniel Tilly says, the Lumix GM1 is beautiful, but sells for 500 in the US. Pretty overpriced, right? That's crazy. I got mine. I remember it was 700, 800 ringgit. So that's like less than 200 US dollars. Just body though, not, not with the lens. Lens is separate. Just body only with uh, this grip, uh, original grip. Uh, is I got it for like, 200 US dollars or less. So I thought it was a, a good price. Well, Bigong says, idea for your next video, how to properly take care, clean, store, and maintain your camera lenses. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, again, I'm not the right person to do that, but I can give one advice though. Uh, if you have not done so, invest in a dry box. I think the dry box is going to save you a lot of headaches in the future whenever you're not using the camera like camera and lenses just put it in the dry box make sure the humidity is about 40 to 50 percent so that nothing grows in the camera and also don't keep the humidity too low because if it goes below 30 percent let's say it goes down to 10 percent then uh, something's going to break down the camera because the camera has a lot of mechanical parts so the oil the lubricants are going to dry you know, like the shutter is moving, right? So when there's not enough lubricants, then things will fall apart in the camera. So make sure the humidity is controlled. So keep your cameras and lenses in dry box. That's the best advice I can give. Like I don't clean my camera. Like from time to time, I'll... Okay, here's another advice I can give you, right? So here, uh, OM system or the representative of OM Digital Solutions, Olympus, they do come out uh, to events like photo fair or they have uh, certain uh, touch and try events where the customers can actually bring the cameras in for them to clean professionally the cameras and lenses. So bring it to the engineers or the technicians and they will actually do professional deep cleaning for cameras and lenses on the spot for you. I think that's uh, something that you can do. Richard is uh, talking to Daniel. Check out the KH camera for use Olympus. That's a good idea. Uh, last call news says, Saludos, amigo from Tijuana, Mexico. Hello, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Nice to see you. Rutayan, hey, nice to see you, man. How are you? Since so many people are wanting to try street photography, just sharing Jasper Tijano's work. He uses EM10 and his work is so good. He and Alex Wet have similar eye to my untrained eye. Uh, Rutayan, thanks for the suggestions. Uh, I'm sure Jasper Tijano is, has some excellent work. And of course, Alex Webb is a legendary photographer. But uh, I, I just want to stop you there when you say you have an untrained eye. I disagree. Although I don't know you in person, I haven't seen your photography work. We are all different and we all see things differently. And don't change the way you see things just because you think that the other photographer is more awesome than you. Just because Jasper or Alex uh, takes better, you think they take better photographs than you, then you try to emulate them and you change the way you see things. I think that's the biggest mistake that a lot of learning photographers do. They want to emulate the, the people that they admire. They want to emulate the, some master photographers. Uh, then they completely change the style and along the way, they lost the identity. Now, for you, you think that you have an untrained eye. For me, I think that is an advantage. I think you should use that because your own vision is yourself. You put part of yourself into your photography. That's what's going to make your photography truly shine. That's what's going to put something extra, something unique into your photographs that no one else 
can copy. So don't don't put yourself down because you think you have untrained eye. All right. Rebirth twenty five twenty six says, could you just put your vlog channel in relate channel? I think not many people know you have a second channel. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. Maybe I can put it on my main page so you can go to the vlog channel. Alright, thanks for the suggestion. Tanker Bruja says, I really think it would be fun to see you do a video about your photography process, like how you choose a location to shoot, and then maybe how that sort of things turn out and how you find photos. Uh, the thing about locations in Kuala Lumpur is we don't have that many locations. <laughs> Like, I, I can tell you the locations that I go to, like Pataling Street, Bukit Bintang, Chowkit, Pudu. And if you have followed me for a while, you also know that I've been going to the same locations. So in terms of how to choose, uh, there's not much to talk about, depending, depending on where I am, right? Uh, how I find my photos, yes. Uh, so that's what I've been doing a lot more recently. I've been doing POV style uh shooting where i have my action camera with me to show you what happens around me and in front of me before i click my shutter button so how i find my subjects in location and how i interact with my subjects and what happens before i click the shutter button and that's what i've been doing more and more recently defense that says i'm looking for a panasonic gs8 maybe a side-by-side -side comparison of that and a gx9 i i can't find these cameras like, they are non-existent here. Like, I, I would love to get my hands on, say, a Panasonic GF1, for example, or Panasonic LX100, or Panasonic GH4, or any any Panasonic cameras. Like, I just cannot find them, right? Like, I, I appreciate the suggestion because I asked for them, and thanks for that. I think that's an excellent uh, suggestion. But I think another person who would be great to do that kind of video would be Microphone Nerds. Uh, like you guys can find stuff from MPB or I don't know, this, this kind of uh, use uh, camera stores used to have everything, right? Uh, so yeah, microphone nurse Emily would have been a, a better person to, to fulfill that uh, comparison. Tanker Bruja says, uh, talking to defense that GS8 uh, advantage weather ceiling fully articulating screen. Yep. Hey Zoltan, <laughs> thank you for that. Pinnacle Pete says, future live chat topic suggestion. Why did you choose Olympus? Oh, why did I choose Olympus? Well, the short answer is that Olympus was cheaper. So my first Olympus camera was E410. And it was about 20% cheaper than equivalent Canon and Nikon cameras, DSLRs at that time. The entry-level camera, I remember the Nikon was the... Uh, D40X and the Canon was 400D and Olympus was 410 and it was really about 20% cheaper so it's all about cost. Tanker Bruja says, uh, Robin, kind of off topic but I was curious if you share my view when I recommend new photographers gear to start off very simple and cheaper is better if they can afford more. Yes, I always encourage people to spend less when they start photography, you don't have to break the bank. You can always look for older gear, like now, anyone can start with EM10 Mark I or EM5 Mark I Mark II or even the original EM1. They are so cheap now. Of course, you can buy things used, uh, no problem whatsoever. And because they are used, uh, once after you use it for a while, let's say one or two years, and you want to upgrade to the next camera, right? Then you can resell these cameras without losing much money along the process. Tanker Bruja says, until they learned the fundamentals, then upgrade later. Yes. Learn first, shoot as much as possible because your first 10,000 photographs are going to be crap anyway. Zoltan says, Olympus camera is, Olympic camera is the Olympus. Love the look, build quality, and the feel of the camera. Can't ask for a better camera for my enthusiasm for photography than the Olympus OMD line of cameras. That is true. I agree. Olympus cameras do look very, very good. Rutayan says, oh, that's a very good insight. Thanks, Robin. Yes, uh, don't lose yourself along the process of photography. Like, I understand that we learn from other photographers. We, we, we take uh, the good things from them and then we, we infuse them in our own photography. Uh, but along the way, we also have to be conscious about our identity, our own eye, right? Like, I, I don't believe you have an untrained eye, right? Richard says, Jet 7 is even hard to find. I know, right? Like, it's impossible to find these cameras. I would love to find these cameras. Like, guys, like, seriously. I would love to try any camera at this point. Like, even the first G1 from Panasonic or G2 or, I don't know, GH3. 
anything. I would love to get. I just. They are impossible to find here in Malaysia. Like, seriously. Hui Wilin says, Wow, Robin, you have been doing this for two and a half hours. I've been working uh, 10 kilometers per second and come back since my comments earlier on. You deserve a break now. I will probably go on until maybe another 30 minutes. Uh, I'll stop at midnight here in Malaysia. Uh, yeah, so no worries. Um, I'm doing okay. Thanks, thanks for the concern. And I do take breaks to drink coffee and uh, drink water. Yeah, I should drink, sip, have, have my last sip of coffee and maybe drink a bit more water. Mm. Ah. <laughs> there is still 100 people here. That's a lot of you. Yeah, how do you guys like my cap, hey? Micro four thirds. <laughs> I think a lot of people will go bonkers if I put like full frame, right? 35 millimeters next week. We'll see what kind of cap I wear next week. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I was scammed today and lost all my money for OM1. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. So I'm considering use EM1 Mark III or Mark II. Are there a big difference in image quality between EM1 Mark III and OM1? I usually crop image ISO 200 to 800. No. So I have tested the OM1 against the EM1 Mark II. I can say that whatever difference there is, is negligible. You get same resolution, you get same dynamic range and same high ISO performance. There's some slight color differences, but not much. I think there are you can just quickly adjust them in post-processing to match whatever color profile that you want to use. But in terms of technical image quality, they are basically very, very similar. So if you are going to get a EMR Mark III or Mark II, uh, go for it. I still use EMR Mark II with confidence now in the, uh, for my professional shoots. I've just done a very large festival. I've delivered my shots to my clients, no issue whatsoever. My clients are happy, uh, image quality. I also shot very high ISO with this camera. I've done a uh, EMR Mark II ISO 2800 video uh, just about three or four weeks ago. You can look at my main my channel, uh, my, one of my videos that I've done recently. Uh, yeah, so if you want to get either EMR Mark III or EMR Mark II, uh, be confident that these cameras can still deliver fantastic results today. And I am so sorry to hear about you being scammed uh, of all your money for the OM1. Things like this should not happen. I think all these scammers, there's like a special place in hell for them. And you know, you don't deserve to have this happen to you. I'm so sorry. Seb123 says, Hi Robin, hey, how are you? Uh, my favorite camera that I own is the Lumix G9 or the GS85. I love my Olympus too, but I started with Panasonic, so I think it's emotional by now. I think G9 is a lot of people's favorite too, if you have seen the comments earlier on. And I think G9 Mark II is going to be a lot of people's favorite as well moving forward with all the improvements they've made, right? Well, Bigong says, KL has a lot of great locations like Sultan Abdul Samad building. I just visited KL in September 2023. So you were there about a month ago. That's amazing. Uh, Sultan Abdul Samad is just around Masjid Jamai area. I usually prefer not to go there because uh, it's very touristy. Uh, and I prefer to go to streets where there are more locals. If you have not realized my photographs, uh, or at least from the POV videos that I've done, uh, it's usually where the locals are at, not so much of the tourist hotspots. But nothing wrong with shooting tourists though, by the way. Uh, if you are into that kind of photography, if it's not a problem for you. I just prefer to show more of what's local here uh, for my international audience. Pinnacle Pete says, we would like to express why we choose Olympus in a future live cast, live chat. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I, I heard you, Pete. I, I heard you. That is a very, very good suggestion. I, I think um, why we choose Olympus is uh, not, uh, like, I, under I understand where you're coming from, but I think a more appropriate question would be, why did you choose Micro Four Thirds? Because I, I don't want to sideline the Panasonic 
people, I think Panasonic is an integral part of Micro Four Thirds as well. So yeah, the suggestion is solid, but I'm gonna like broaden the scope up and like, why did you choose Olympus and Panasonic? Like why did you choose Micro Four Thirds? That is a very good suggestion, Pete. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much for that. I appreciate that. I, I am actually gonna write it down in case I forget. Uh, just, just give me a moment. Just gonna write down this, this idea. Okay, ideas. Why choose M43? Safe. <laughs> Olivia says, thank you for this live. Uh, take care. No worries. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you being here, Olivia. John Wyda. Hey, how are you, John? Nice to see you. Hi, Robin. John from New Jersey. I own an E520 and I've updated to the EM1 Mark III with a 1245, 4150 f2.8, 45 prime, and a TT Artisan 7.5. Love micro four thirds. Yeah, I love micro four thirds. Look at my awesome, awesome cap. <laughs> and I had the E520 as well. I started using it. Uh, long story short, uh, E410, my first DSLR was stolen from me, so I had to buy another camera, which was the E520. So in a way, the E520 was my technically my first Olympus camera. So yeah. Zoltan says, because you're a lovely guy, Robin, we love to listen and learn from you. Thank you so much for your support for the Micro Four Thirds community. Oh, thank you so much. You are too kind, hey. And because you guys are so awesome, that's why I'm here. <laughs> it's all because of you guys. The other Tony Dutch says, three years ago, I got my hands on the EPM1, then the EPL4 with a VF4. VF I don't think there is an EPL4. So it's either EPL3 or EPL5 because Olympus skipped the number four, followed by an EPL9, and now sporting an EM10 Mark III. I tend to sell on my cameras for cheap to friends to get them into a hobby too. Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I sometimes just give them the camera. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have a super chat. Uh, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, man, I appreciate all this love from you guys. You really, really helped me a lot to keep me going. Scott says, another great live stream. Many thanks. No worries. My pleasure. Hey, and, and thanks to you guys for being here. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing this if you guys are not here. And like looking at the statistics, there's like a hundred of you here still. A hundred. That can fill up like a small hole, hey, like a, a, a huge classroom. So thank you, Scott, for the super chat and, and thanks for being here. The other Tony Dutch says, furthermore, having lots of fun lenses on the Micro Four Thirds platform, including a tilt adapter, super fun. Yes, that is true. It's fun having so many lens choices and that's the advantage of using Micro Four Thirds. Uh, so sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Thank you. I love to watch your YouTube. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, wait, let me check. I, I'm so sorry again to hear about the OM1, but yeah, hey, uh, all I can say is whatever camera you get next, the only way to beat the scammers is go out and take as many awesome photographs as you can because only your photography can make up for any losses that you have in your life. Yep. Number six says, all the old cameras are flying off the shelves. Fuji cameras have gone up in price. I saw a Fuji X20 going for $800. That's crazy. The manufacturers don't make fun cameras anymore. I know, right? Like we should have more fun cameras. Like why don't we get more fun cameras? It just doesn't make sense. Alan Butcher is talking to number six. I am a free man. Aww. Richard K. Ross says, I love my EM5 Mark III. I love the old Olympus film cameras, but they are also hard to find in good condition. That is true. That is true. Jose Canessa says, Can you tell how disappointed you felt with kit lenses when you've got prime and pro lenses? I found a huge difference. No. I think they have different places. Like, uh, And to be fair, Olympus 14-42 to Pancake and uh, this Lumix 12-32 uh, to kit lens, this prime lens, these are excellent lenses for kit lenses like lumix and uh, uh, olympus they make amazing kit lenses I, I i wouldn't hesitate to bring them out to do some like casual snapshots as well and of course uh, i don't deny that you can do a lot more with pro lenses and prime lenses having brighter aperture you can render shallow depth of field of course these lenses being a lot more expensive they have much better optical formula so you get sharper images like you better contrast your rendering is so much better uh i'm not denying that but uh using this 
small lenses are also so fun and I have no problem with the image quality. The image quality is also more than good enough. If you ask me, I wouldn't hesitate to use them. Alan Butcher says, Panef for me, just ask to be picked up and used. Yeah, Panef is a lot of people's favorite on the stream as well. You're not alone. Rebirth2526 says, I heard that for video shooting with Lumix, you need to learn how to manner focus in video. That was true until G9 Mark II. You don't need to manner focus anymore. G9 Mark II has face detection and autofocus, so you can rely on autofocus for all your video needs. They have come a long way. Tanker Bruja says, or talking to Rebirth 256, not the case, but it helps on the older Lumix that do not have face detection autofocus. That's just what I said. David Sabula says, uh, hey, together. Hi, how are you, David? Thanks for dropping by. Almost no director will want you to let the camera focus when you can pull focus manually. But here's the thing, like, uh, if you are a filmmaker, then you have specific tools for video making, right? Uh, but these days, a lot of us are not filmmakers. Like, I don't see myself as a filmmaker, but I take a lot of videos. I'm a content creator. And I rely on autofocus because once I set up the camera, like now, right, I don't have to worry about focus. Like, I can't manual focus because I want to move away. Like, sometimes I go around in here, especially if I want to show a product, right, like this. I want the camera to auto automatically find the focus, right? I don't want to ma have to manual focus. So autofocus is important, especially for solo content creator. Like I understand the filmmaking background, you know, serious filmmakers who want to pull focus, whatever, but I'm not making money from filmmaking. I'm not making money for video, but I want to create uh, YouTube videos. And I've been making videos for four years and I rely on autofocus and I'll be crippled without autofocus. Okay, where were we? Uh, Phil Thomas said, I have one Panasonic G3 and G70 and the Olympus Air. Ah, finally, I was gonna wonder if anyone's gonna mention the Olympus Air. <laughs> finally, one person. Denise Devane says, I love my EMR Mark III the best. However, your last live discussed full frame cameras, which fascinated me. I love the discussion of full frame cameras options with 40 plus megapixels. Yeah, I just think that uh, what went wrong during the last stream is that a lot of people assume me saying that should Olympus go full frame means Olympus should abandon micro four thirds. I didn't ask Olympus to abandon micro four thirds. I didn't say that just because Olympus explored the option of having a full frame camera, that should just throw away the micro four thirds system. No, I love micro four thirds. Look at what I'm wearing, micro four thirds, right? Uh, look at what Panasonic is doing. They went full frame, but they still have excellent products for micro four thirds. So why can't they have both? And I like the idea, like what you said, having a full frame camera, uh, I think it's gonna bring some sales and some profit to the company and it, eating a chunk of the large pie in the market and it can bring back some confidence to the brand, hey. So it's not necessarily a bad idea. David says, a quick question, GH6 or G9 Mark II for filmmaking? I am not a filmmaker, so not a, um, Definitely not a question that I can answer, but for my content creation, if I were to choose a camera to make YouTube videos, G9 Mark II, because I'm a one-man crew, I set out a tripod, I mount a camera on the tripod, once I hit the record button, I don't want to worry if I'm in focus or not. I just want to start talking and make sure that everything is okay. If it's a GH6, I can't rely on the autofocus. It's still a bit wonky. It, it sometimes drifts to the background for no reason. Uh, G9 Mark II, definitely a huge improvement. Tanker Buja says pro zoom lenses are also much larger being fixed aperture. That is true. I wish the LX100 Mark II lens would come as dedicated lens for the rest of Micro Four Thirds kit. I really love that lens. But that lens is also not perfect. That lens has issues like distortion, corner softness, uh, contrast is not great. There are some compromises there and here. Phil Thomas says when coming a new software for the air, nah, I think they have just that is already discontinued and they're not going to look back into that, that camera. MJ Kanayon says, Last two months, I just recently bought an EM10 Mark I as my first camera and my first Micro Four Thirds camera as a beginner in the world of photography thanks to your videos. Robin helped me to pick my first camera. No worries. I'm glad you are discovering the world of Micro Four Thirds and you're exploring photography. I think it's a very rewarding hobby and uh, there's a lot for you to learn. Uh, it's a very fulfilling thing to do when you go out, make images happen uh, and putting a part of yourself and your vision into 
with your pictures and yeah go out and take more photographs that's all i can say to you and uh welcome welcome to the world of photography <laughs> time check we are 15 minutes to midnight in malaysia at least and we still have 106 people there's a lot of you mariono bazan says hi from argentina hey how are you and she says, never heard of Olympus Air. So if you go to my channel, I've made a video about the Olympus Air. Uh, it is my highest, uh, most successful video up to date. I received almost 1 million views for that video. So Olympus Air, just go to um, my videos, search Olympus Air, or just go to the main page where you can see uh, the products uh, reviews. The most popular one, the first one is the Olympus Air. You cannot miss it. <laughs> That is crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I should definitely do something with the Olympus Air again. Hey, because I only made one video about Olympus Air. Like maybe I should just attach a telephoto lens. Maybe I should get like a pa like Olympus 75-300 or a Panasonic 100-300, to mount it on Olympus Air, mount it on a phone, and then go into like a zoo or bird park and start taking telephoto images with the phone, right? That would be so awesome. Yeah, that's like one of the things that I should probably do in the future. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me see. Oh, my lens cap is dropped off. Some of the things that is coming on my channel, uh, I've just, looking at the videos that I've done, in the, earlier this week, I released a video on the Yongnuo 40 f2.8. Uh, well, to be honest, that video, uh, if you've watched it, it was done more than half a year ago. So some of my videos, uh, I did it because I have spare time, and then I park it because I know that the video is not going to do well. <laughs> Rightfully so, that video was like a 9 out of 10 compared to the previous 10 videos. So it wasn't doing very well. And to me, sometimes it's not about just... This is a dilemma of a content creator, right? Because we want to be successful. We want the views because more views equates more ad money. And I do need to earn uh, some income from my YouTube videos. But uh, here's the thing. There's always the, the dilemma or the struggle of making a content that will do well. Uh, that people want to watch, uh, that the audience will actually want to click and spend time uh, watching versus the content that I personally want to make. It's, it's always a struggle, right? And like, if, if, if I were to just pick the topics that I want to talk about for my main channel, then it would just be like purely photography, like how to make prints or... Uh, how to compose better or how do you see the art of seeing in photography, right? Or how do you do effective storytelling in, in photography or really like deep diving into the, the, the core of street photography? Like how do you really make impactful street photography images or, you know, like just, or how do you put yourself in your photography because your, your photography is a reflection of yourself. Uh, these are the things that I want to talk about, uh, really, really explore in, in my, my channel. But I also realize that if I talk about prints, if I talk about composition, if I talk about storytelling, if I talk about, you know, like the core of street photography, no one is going to click on my video. <laughs> I've tried before. I have tried before and the views are like, <sighs> it's like, I'd rather not make the videos. You get what I mean? And then versus like, oh, why micro four thirds is better than full frame? Guarantee you it's going to be like the top video of the week. Or like, oh, like, you know, um, here is how I deal with uh, 15 stops of dynamic range getting it out from my EMR Mark II. Or how I increase the sharpness output of my 20 megapixel files from my OMD cameras. Or five tips on getting the best results from your autofocus. You know, these are the, I understand that these videos help people as well, but these are also the kind of videos that are very gear oriented. And while they help to bring in the views, but because they are also very technically sort of like, it, it promotes technical obsession. Like it drives people to think that, ah, oh, you know, I need to get better sharpness and I get better dynamic range. I need, to, I need the latest and greatest. Like, oh, I'll make videos like, oh, why? You know, that like, OM1 is better than G9 Mark II. I'm sure the video is going to fly. You know, uh, or, or why my, uh, my, my OM1 uh, in terms of image quality is better than uh, the latest full frame camera, you know, in what I do. These, these are the topics that will fly. But if I keep making these topics, it also eats into my soul. <laughs> because I'm not really doing what I want to do. So the, the, the struggle is trying to find a balance between 
creating the content for the audience and creating the content for myself. So on Monday's topic, the, the you all know, 14mm f2.8, it's more of a personal video that I, I just went out and have fun and exploring the 14mm focal length, which is not a popular focal length. Uh, I thought uh, doing a POV video was, was really fun and I had a lot of uh, great time going out with Mati Sulanto and uh, my friend Azul uh, exploring the streets of Kuala Lumpur and to me, that's the best that I can do for myself, right? And it's, I'm shooting it for my soul. I'm not shooting it for anyone, not for a client. I'm shooting it for myself. And I don't have any restrictions. No one to tell me what to do. I don't have to deliver the photos. And that's the best kind of photography in the world. You just shoot for yourself. And guess what? Not many people are interested in watching these kind of videos. <laughs> Anyways, enough of rant. Let me get back to the comments. We do have a few comments here already. The other Tony Dutch says, are there currently any super compact micro photos cameras on the market? There is just so many models and it's kind of hard to stay up to date. Something the size of EPM1 would be kind of amazing. Super compact micro photos cameras, I would say EPL10 or GF10 from Panasonic. Yep. As Trump says, in hindsight, I think they should have considered a PSC while using the same mount when they started the Pro lineup back in 2013. They could have followed the technological progress of a PSC, but I don't see any progress in a PSC though. I think a PSC is dead. What progress did you see? Like Sony is not really paying attention to a PSC. They're just driving the full frame camera. I know they've just launched the A6700, but even so, it's like not really that much of a highlight if you compare with all the full frame cameras, right? And Canon, is, while they have APS-C cameras, but they're also pushing their full frame. And Nikon, yeah, they have like the Z50, ZFC, but like, look at what they do with the ZF. After you look at the full frame, you don't really want the APS-C cameras anymore. And I think APS-C camera is kind of redundant. Looking at the micro four thirds, I think micro four thirds strikes the right balance between size uh, savings, weight savings, and still delivering fantastic results. If I compare my images with APS-C, I don't see much difference. But if I compare my images to full frame cameras, I can tell you I see a significant difference. <laughs> Animal Infotainment says, Hi Robin, do you think camera companies should implement Android uh, UI as most interfaces currently are very archaic? Also, you get benefit of editing on Snapseed and then posting on Instagram directly. Android was originally invented for use in camera systems. Fun fact. I don't know what happened along the way. Uh, I think the camera manufacturers are not too keen on having an open source software for the cameras, uh, especially for the UI, so they didn't adopt Android. But yeah, it should be the way. Then we, it allows people to de develop apps for the cameras as well, right? It's just so much for the camera companies not wanting to open up their camera for everyone. <laughs> and Trick says, oops, now I remember the video. Yes, the video is there. Pinnacle Pete says, my favorite camera has always been my latest. Kodak, uh, Instamatic, to Konica, Kyocera, E500, EM1, EM1 Mark III. All right, very interesting list of cameras. Stefan says, I love my EM10 Mark II. My favorite lens is the Sigma 56 1.4. Amazing value. I think EM10 Mark II is also an underrated camera. Hey, such a great camera, fast, uh, great image quality, nice tilt screen, good build quality, uh, has built-in electronic viewfinder, has image stabilization. And Lego says, Hey Robin, can you comment on the Metacon 25 Speedmaster versus Voigtlander versus Nocton? I have not used any of these lenses. And as I've always mentioned, no autofocus, no go for Robin. Go to Rav says, Hello from Germany. Hey, how are you? So nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Number six says, those subjects about pure photography get lots of views on some other channels. If you make it, they will come. Not true. And a lot of these channels, uh, they're already big, right? Some, some channels, they're already big. So whatever topic that they make will fly. Like my channel is still kind of small, smallish in the world of photography, right? In the world where you see people get like millions of subscribers. So yeah, like once you made it huge, or whatever you say, people will listen. SL7293 says, I for one like your photography technique oriented videos even more than your gear reviews. Thank you so much. You're one of the rare few people who actually appreciate my uh, photography centric videos. 
Animal Infotainment says hi. He's saying hi to David. I recently found you in the Kazakhstan video. Sub after seeing more of your content. I think for wildlife, I will pick G9 Mark II for autofocus. Awesome. Tanker Bruja says, I wish more people wanted to watch those kinds of videos and the algorithm didn't bury them. Those are my favorite kind of videos and YouTube makes them so difficult to find. That's true. Kim says, hello. Hey, Kim, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. Nice to see you here. Ron's Perfect Shot Photography says, I appreciate your authenticness. Most people have gotten caught up in the res repetitive clickbait content and liking the pictures. They aren't even real. I enjoy capturing real photos as I saw them. Yeah, I think it's like, this, like I said, the struggle is finding the balance of creating the videos for the audience because if nobody watches my video, then why am I here? <laughs> and also like create the balance of creating the video for myself, the things that I genuinely want to do and the things that I genuinely want to, to say, right? So the balance is just striking the balance, right? I just need to find the balance. Then I'm okay. Full Thomas says, how can have one... Ascom driver for the Olympus Air. I don't know what Ascom driver is. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I can't understand you. Tanker Bruja says, Lumix UI is great. I would not want them to use Android, but if I was a Sony or Olympus user, I might understand wanting a more customizable UI. I have used some Panasonic cameras. I don't think the UI is great. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Animal Infotainment says, Fuji APS-C is really impressive. The SH2S has a 14-bit uh, ADC, making its DR very comparable to full frame, at least in low frame rate video and single shot uh, photography. Yeah, but Fuji is also doing um, the X-Trans sensor, right? So that's a very different thing. It's proprietary. They are not sharing it with anyone else. So yeah. And Lego says, okay, then uh, how about the Olympus 12 F2 versus Leica 15? It's like comparing apples to oranges. One is a 24 equivalent and one is a 30 equivalent. They are very different. And people always ask me like, hey, Robin, how, how do you compare a 35 millimeter lens to a 50 millimeter lens? But they are both very different. They give you different coverage. You use these lenses in different shooting scenarios and they just give you different coverage. You just can't compare them, right? John, hey, how are you? <laughs> John is a fellow photographer from Kuala Lumpur, an amazing professional wedding photographer, one of the best wedding photographers uh, that I've known in my life. I've learned so much hanging out with him, and he's not stingy in sharing knowledge and his experience, and he's just overall an amazing, amazing guy. Let's see what he says. A Samsung Galaxy Camera 2 uses Android Pure. It was the best Instagram camera in 2014. Ah, I should just rob you from your Samsung camera and start making content hey john and yeah we should we should be doing some um street photography soon some we should go out have some photo walk john yep george Moring says for what it's worth i watch your video for you and the fact that i always learn something i don't care if it's for gear or photography although i prefer the latter yeah thank you so much for saying that it means the whole world to me uh i wish more people are like you prefer the photography content rather than gear Andres Rochelle says, I keep returning to the Lumix GX9. It's too versatile to be just a backup camera. It carries my beloved M Zuko 17 and the 7 Artisan's Fisheye 7.5. Yeah, the GX9. I wish I can find one in the used market. Hey, that would be awesome. I want to try one. Don't know. Puri says, small but best. That's true. Astromi says, I use mainly the OM-1 with the 12-40 f2.8 and the Panasonic like 100-400 when I go for a walk in the woods. That is less than 2 kilograms in my backpack, which is the main reason for using Micro Four Thirds. That is true. Uh, the size and weight advantage for Micro Four Thirds is what wins us over other larger system formats, especially if you're hiking, right? Like you say in your backpack and you're going for a walk in the woods. Quite frankly, a podcast about Howard Stern. Hey, Robin. Hey, nice to see you here. I'm just about to end the stream. Uh, cheers from uh, Southeast Asia. I currently use the original EM1 for stills and effects shots and really enjoying the Panasonic GX85 out for street photography. Very solid choices. Very solid choices. Richard is talking to Ron's perfect shot photography. I agree and that's why I strive to create. I like more of a film look and own the Fuji X-T2 too. And Trio says Panasonic UI is among the best, but Android will simplify even more. I don't agree. I actually prefer Canon's UI over Panasonic. 
Mark Wayne says, Hey Robin, love your EMR Mark 3. Love my EMR Mark 3, sorry. Totally awesome. Love the handheld 50 megapixels images. Yeah, EMR Mark 3 is totally awesome. I agree with you. All right, time check, guys. It is um, one minute past midnight here in Malaysia, and I'm so sorry, I do have to put an end to the stream. Oh, currently, we still have 105 people watching. That's a lot of you, even after three hours. And uh, it has been three hours. I've been talking nonstop. Uh, thank you so much for staying with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys joining in the stream. I appreciate you guys telling me which one of the micro four thirds camera is your favorite. Uh, and I appreciate the chat. And like I said, uh, there's no Robin one without you guys. Uh, if you have enjoyed this live stream or if you've enjoyed watching any of my videos, if you want me to continue making more videos, you want me to continue doing more live streams, uh, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below and also there's a description up here, the buy me coffee link. <laughs> uh, any small contribution goes a long way. It will definitely help me to make more content and publish them right here, right? Uh, another live stream next week on Thursday. I'll see you guys again. And until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.